so I'll just try and bear that in mind. Okay, thank you. No apologies then, right, move on. Item two, I've signed all, sorry, go on, um, Tommy. I uh, believe Councillor O'Reilly is out of the country, yeah, still, so put an apology for Councillor O'Reilly. I hope he's all right. <laughs> right, that's okay. Councillor O'Reilly, um, thanks very much, uh, Tommy. Right, um, item three, I've, sorry, item two, I've signed all the minutes, so that's done. Item three, any declarations of interest in regard to items on the agenda today? No, I don't see anything. Darren, I believe you have a couple of updates before we actually go into the list, so I'll hand over to you now. Hold on. Bear with me, members. Darren. Okay, members, uh, good afternoon. Um, just to give you an update on a few applications. Uh, the first one is one that was deferred last month. Uh, it was meant to be returned to you this month. So it's LA10-2023-1330, uh, which was for the erection of a dwelling uh, for Mr. McDermott. Uh, so the application was meant to come back uh, today, but additional information was received after the planning committee meeting. Uh, so neighbours have been re-notified of that information and the application couldn't come back today because the expiry date for the public consultation hadn't uh, been passed. So the application will be brought back to the committee in, in December. So just to let you know on that one. So in relation to the applications that are on today, the agenda today, so paper eight applications three and four, uh, this is for the Ballymore services uh, for the list of building in High Street in Oma. You have two applications, you have the 552, which is a list of building, and then the 553, which is the full application. There's a request received from the agent uh, on the 16th of November to defer the applications until the December meeting. Uh, so on the screen then, members, is the email that has come in. So I'll just read out what the request says. So in relation to the planning committee meeting scheduled for the Wednesday 22nd of November on the above applications, I would be grateful if this item on the agenda could be deferred to the next meeting on the 14th of December. As I am the agent, I would like the opportunity to comment on the project, and I am unavailable on this date, which is today, as I am travelling. So Any we'll... comment, members? I know we've talked about this on the protocol and we will be talking about it workshop uh, next week. Councillor McCann, Stephen, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. I suppose uh, we'd like to hear maybe what the agent has to say. I know it's a listed, listed building that's probably uh, 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 an application which will have interest out there, I suppose, and I would like to hear what you have to say in terms of the of that proposal. So I'm happy to, to propose it affair in this case, Chair. Uh, and that's for both applications. For both applications, so they're interlinked, right? That's okay. I've got a proposal to defer because of the list stated. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McGrath, uh, all agreed? Agreed. So I'll just take a note of that. Deferred. Deferred. Right, Darren, what's next? Okay, members. So the next one then is paper B, application number three, LA10 2022 1196 uh, for dwelling and loop road. And the applicant then is P Green. Uh, this is what the uh, application was deferred for a site visit members, if you recall. So the application was meant to come back today. However, in the meantime, additional information has been received re relating to the planning history on the site. Uh, so that information is material uh, and needs to be fully considered by officers. Um, so if I could request today, members, that the application is deferred uh, and indeed is delegated back to officers to allow us to consider that information and the outcome of that then will have a bearing upon the, the application itself. So. Request to defer by officers and delegate it back to officers as well. Okay, Darren. Councillor McCann, Stephen? Yeah, happy to propose a deferral based on what uh, Darren has just outlined. Okay, thank you. Got a request to defer. Uh, Councillor Fee? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. In light of what Darren has said, are we all happy to agree with that? All agreed. Okay, so I'll take a note of that. So that's okay. a just, just number three deferred. Right, Darren, go on. Just to confirm deferred and also delegate it back to And delegate it yeah. back, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then finally, members, just in terms of paper B, applications five and six, um, the uh, LA10 2023-1502 for dwelling house and 1500, uh, which is also for a dwelling house on the co-road by the same applicant. The recommendations of these applications are to refuse planning permission. There's been a request for the agent to defer the application until the December meeting to seek speaking rights. Uh, and just to advise members, we have had information in which is personal and confidential, and we may, may wish to go into committee just to discuss that if that's appropriate. Yep. 
The proposal we go into committee, Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Robinson, all agreed? All agreed. Can we shut off the uh, recording, please, when we go into committee? And can we clear the gallery, please?
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So members just no, no hold on, Siobhan, oh, until we get back in. We have to get the other members in and then we can sum up. I, are we back on again? Yep, yep. You can get everybody back in again and then you can sorry, you can sum up. Okay, go ahead, Siobhan. Okay, members, while in committee, um, members heard the, the reasons for the, the request for deferral for LA 10 2023-1502 and LA 10 2023-1500 applications 5 and 6 on our agenda today and have agreed a deferral of up to two months. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, is that everything finished with regard to updates? Great, Darren. We'll just go back now to the main agenda, item four, and we'll take application number one, LA10 bar 2023 bar 2077 full. Yeah, hold on, Lee. There you are. Now you can speak. Paper A, application number one, uh, LA10 2023 2077. It's a full application uh, under section 54 to vary planning condition two imposed on the previous planning approvals. Uh, so that's LA 10 191392, which uh, was amended by another approval, LA 10 2023 1530. The application is to allow the gross floor area of the approved units, uh, and you can see the list of the development there uh, on the screen, to increase from 2165 to 2 to 12997 square meters. And I'll go into that in more detail in the minutes, members. So really what they're looking to do is put a mezzanine floor into unit four, which will increase the gross floor space. The location then is the, the Uniport site. And if your members are familiar where that is, the full address is in the report. The applicant is F. Curran and the agent then is uh, Eamon Lockery. The recommendation then is to approve planning permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to the conditions. Your members will recall this application uh, being before you. So the original approval was in 191392, and that has been amended by uh, another approval. The current application then seeks to vary those approvals or vary the permission and the conditions. Currently, you have an approval on site in Unit 4, and it's just a rectangular building or rectangular block within the overall development. The gross floor space of it is 1,000 square metres, and you can see the layout then on the screen. The proposal then is to put a mezzanine floor in it on the uh, upper area of the, the floor. So the ground floor will be realigned slightly to create a store and a canteen at the back, with the main area being a display area with an entrance and uh, lifts and stairs. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the proposed floor area in unit floor. That'll take you upstairs and there'll be another display area. So the overall, the two floors will have a gross floor area of 1832 square metres. The mezzanine floor is inside the building uh, with a lift and access um, stairs to allow access uh, and no changes in. So the details then, members, just to be clear on what we're considering and, uh, before us today. So this is a section 54 to vary the previous approvals, and we're looking solely at the condition number two. Condition two at the moment, uh, it has approval for the four retail warehouse units, the garden centre, the leisure unit. Uh, and you can see the limits on the floor space there. So one unit, as I say, is approved at 1,000 square metres gross floor space. Current application, putting the mezzanine floor, seeks to up that from 1,000 to 1,832, and that will increase the overall development from 12,165 to 12,997 square metres gross floor space. So the recommendation then of officers for the reasons within the report is to approve that change, and condition two then will be amended, and I'll not read the whole thing out, but it allows for the increase up to 12,997, and also then for the unit that was 1,000 to go up to 1,832 square metres gross floor space. Uh, the use will remain with the bulky goods condition uh, in relation to the overall development and the previous approvals. And there's a slight amendment just to condition two in terms of some of the numbers members, but they're only minor changes uh, just to tidy up. Um, so we'll, we'll look after that in the, when the decision is issued. So the reasons listed within the report members and in line with the wording of the transition arrangements uh, in the 2015 LDP regulations, when reading both the DDP and the plan strategy together, the proposal accords with the LDP for the reasons stated and has recommended approval subject to the conditions listed within the report.
Okay, we have representations by the agent and applicant, uh, Mr. Eamon Lockery and John Curran. If you care to dress forward, gentlemen. I know you've been in front of the committee before, so you don't have to introduce yourselves. So, so you're looking into the back of the heads of some of the guys there. That's probably their best side. So, you have ten minutes to present, either or or. And if, if you don't need the ten minutes, just um, take it as it is, and then you may or may not get pressed. You, Damon, I presume you're going first. Right yes. away, go. Thank you, Chair. Um, we won't take we won't take very long. Um, We've been here before. Uh, we've been here before when with the original application. We've been here before when we came along with our the uh, tweaks to uh, secure the range. And we've been here before to secure the home bargains application. And this is the third application where we we have to come back each time because the retailers have slight variations in their own requirements. And as we had take our original permission and we we, we, have, we secure our, our retailers, they, they want us to make these slight tweaks. Um, so this is an application for an 832 square meter mezzanine floor in uh, unit four. There's no external changes to the unit proposed. Um, it is agreed uh, to subject to plan to an end user called Easy Living, who'll be another new retailer to, to Ennis Gillen. Easy Living Interiors are a Republic of Ireland uh, company and they've opened up, started opening up shops and retail parks around around Northern Ireland. They've opened recently in Coleraine at the retail at, at the Riverside Centre. They've opened in Boucher in Belfast. They've opened in a retail park in Ballymena. Uh, they sell household furniture, goods, and other bulky items. Um, so this application we provide the retail impact and needs assessment and, and an assessment on the sequential considerations. Um, the proposal is a modest increase in the turnover of the unit. And the resulting impact of the town centre will be equally minor. There's no objections from consultees or members of the public, and we welcome the department's expedient assessment of the application. We welcome the recommendation to approve the proposal. So, thank you for the opportunity to speak, Chair and committee members, and we're happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thanks sir, very much, Eamon. Succinct as usual. Uh, members, any questions for Eamon? Or indeed, Mr. Curran, John? I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll move on to uh, Darren. Do you have any further comments? No further comments, members. Happy to take any questions. Yeah. Could I just make a note, Councillor Mahon, you just come on. Um, I don't believe you're here for the start of the uh, presentation, so I'm going to rule you out for um, voting on it. Okay. Everybody else, um, if you've no questions for Darren, it's now decision time. Councillor McGuire, Tommy. Councillor Margaret Kearney, I just ha uh, I think I'll uh, propose the recommendation. Okay, thanks, Tommy. I've oh, got a recommendation to approve. Posed to have a seconder. Councillor Campbell. Are we all agreed? Um, online, Earl. Are you in agreement? I'm agreed, Chair. Yeah, thanks very much indeed. So that's unanimous, Darren. Okay. Councillor Mahon still looking on there, Chair. Pardon? Councillor Mahon still looking on there. He, he must want to come on. Councillor Mahon, yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, no, I've been in from the very start of the meeting, from the declaration of interest stage, so I'm not sure what your system's showing there. But uh, well, it, just to let well, you know. It, did, it didn't show up in my system. My apologies, but um, I'm going to stick with my ruling. That's sure. okay. Okay, thank you. No hard feelings. <laughs> okay, Darren. Yeah, so application number one then, members, LA10 2023 2077-F. The recommendation was to approve planning permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to 27 conditions. Members have granted approval uh, for, subject to those conditions. And um, Okay, thank yeah. you very much. We'll go on now to application number two, that's LA10 bar 2023 bar 2094, a full application. Darren? Yeah, so number two, application number two then, members, LA10 2023 2094, full application for a greenkeeper storage and maintenance shed uh, at Fintna Golf Club. Uh, the applicant then is Fintna Golf Club with the agent uh, BJ Donnelly Architectural Services. The recommendation is to approve planning permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to three conditions. I'll just take members through. I'm sure you're familiar with the location of the, the golf club in Fintna. The site itself then is just the other side of the, the main clubhouse building. 
So the red line is, is just around that area. I'll just zoom in so you can see better, remember. So you can see on the right-hand side there, the aerial photograph, the aerial image, uh, looking down on the existing clubhouse, the car parking area. And then the other side of it is the existing buildings where the existing shed is. The new shed then will be in roughly in the position of the red rectangle. Uh, so it'll create an L shape then between the two sheds uh, for the maintenance area. The site is adjacent to uh, water course, and that is an important material consideration as part of the application. And the application was front loaded with all the information needed to consider the impacts upon the water course and also any protected species and habitats. The building itself then, as I say, is a machinery storage shed, a uh, typical uh, rectangular shaped cladded shed uh, with two areas of sand storage out the front. Um, that's the elevation, so 24 metres in length, uh, a typical cladded shed with concrete walls uh, and a cladded roof. And the front and rear elevation then uh, with a large roller shutter doors, uh, again 10 metres in width, so typical storage shed for these sorts of um, sites. Uh, so the recommendation members then is to approve planning permission and subject to the three conditions. Okay, Darren. Right, uh, members, any questions for Darren? Right, we'll go straight to a uh, proposal then, members' decision. Uh, Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. I'm just happy to propose the, the recommendations for sure. Just a quick question. I'm just wondering why did this come into the committee uh, as opposed to being delegated? Is it because it's council property, maybe? Or, uh, okay. Council property. Council property. Okay. They take a long lease, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah happy to propose recommendations. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McCrockery, John. Yeah, I'm not a golfer, but uh, I can appreciate the work that's put into the maintenance of the pitches and uh, uh, the golf course. So uh, there's a lot. We do of, have a lot, a lot of equipment. So I'm happy to yeah. second. Yeah, that's okay. Councillor Rainey, before we go. Support also. That's okay. I have a proposal uh, from Councillor McCann, second by Councillor McCrockery, to go with the officer's recommendation approval. All agreed? Agreed. Online, Earl, David. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. That's unanimous. Darren. Okay, members. So, LA 10, 2023-2094. Recommendation of officers was to approve planning permission. <laughs> And subject to three conditions, members of granted planning permission subject to those three conditions. Thank you very much. We move on now to item five, room seven, called in fives. We've dealt with some of them already, but we go to application number one. That's LA 10 bar 2023 bar 1346. Uh, Darren, you getting out of the chair? James would have this one. We have Seamus in now. Are you here for three of them, Seamus, or just this one? Three of them in total, yeah. Right, that's okay. Right, you take us through it, first of all, yeah, thank you. Okay, good afternoon. So, uh, paper B application one is a full Could application. Could you put your mic down so we pick it up? Help us bit, that's yeah. it, thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, full application for additional car parking at the existing Petal Film Station and shop along the Toddy Ray Road uh, in Oma, or outside Oma. The applicant is A short and the recommendation is to approve planning permission. Uh, the application was recommended for approval by officers but was called in for further consideration at the planning committee. So uh, on the slide, should. Oh. Yeah. So on slide 23, you can see the location map of the site. This includes the extent of the existing site and the land to include the extended area uh, for the Chiara and Lorry Park. Um, the smaller image to the right, uh, showing it uh, a little bit clearer. So the next slide, hopefully it'll come up, yeah. Uh, shows again a little bit more detail, the site plan as it exists, and on the right, the proposed site plan the diced or hatched area being the proposed extended area, the uh, subject of the application. Uh, this slide further detail showing more clearly the existing buildings, the proposed car parking, lorry parking to the front along the Taddy Ray or the lorries to face the Taddy Ray Road and the proposed reconfiguration of the access, which will uh, create a, an entrance exit scenario. Um, see the entrance closer uh, to the fitness side and exit out onto the 
on one side of the premises. A uh, street view image showing the site uh, existing as you move towards Oma along the road. Uh, the next one shows the opposite direction. You can see the premises on the left, the uh, red arrow indicating where the extended area of the site is to be. Um, this slide shows the neighbouring dwelling. We have an, an objector on this application. Um, that's the property that the objector uh, lives in. Uh, you can see it sits on higher ground than the site itself and we have another image showing an approximate distance between the extended area of the site or the, the part to be extended and the objector's property and we measure that at approximately 86 and a half meters uh, of distance with an intervening shed. Um, so just so as, as detailed within the planning report, it's considered that the addition of this, these proposed parking spaces will, will not give rise to an unacceptable effect on the amenity of the, the neighbouring dwelling. Um, there is an acceptable buffer of agricultural land between the two uh, and an outbuilding, as well as the, the, the level difference that was shown on the previous uh, image, um, with the dwelling sitting higher than this proposed extended area. Uh, just an interesting to note that a supporting statement uh, was received since a supporting statement and revised plans were received since the representation was received and no further representations were submitted. So that's, uh, I think, telling to, to note. So uh, the recommendation of the planners is to approve planning permission for the application subject to 11 conditions. Right, thanks very much, Seamus. Uh, we have speaking rights by the applicant, Mr. Andrew Short. Uh, if you could dress forward, Andrew, to one of the speakers there. The procedure is you have 10 minutes to present up to 10 minutes. You don't have to use all the 10 minutes. And no new uh, information is to be introduced apart from what has already been submitted to the planners. Are you happy to proceed? Right, I'll just try and get you live. Yep, there you go. Thank you very much through the chair um, for inviting me or giving me the opportunity to come down and speak about this application. Um, I've been in this sort of area now for a number of years. I developed the halfway house and, and built the Cheeky Fox and allowed um, ample car parking for that side of the road. And I definitely feel that I've invested an awful lot into this area. Regarding the shop, uh, we built a new shop there on an existing old shop, which was very dilapidated, um, which has been a, a very big ax, uh, uh, very big thing for the local community and so on. <clears throat> what we have found is on that main road, which has become a very busy road, it's a road that's used a lot for people to go down to Skillen, uh, to Fentina, Tampo, and further afield, Five Mile Town Clocker. Um, it's a very busy road, and we find that there's a lot of lorries are pulling into the filling station. Now, what happens when they pull into the filling station is they pull up outside the pumps, and that blocks the view for anybody exiting in a car, mothers, children in the car. They cannot see up the road. There's also a slight crest on the road that's maybe just not that clear on the photographs. Um, when you're standing at the front of it up to the right, there's a slight crest and you cannot see the traffic coming. This application is not going to make the shop any busier. It's not going to bring any more people to this area. It's going to simply make it safe for, for people calling into the shop to use it. There was an accident on that road, 25 meters down from the shop on Monday, um, where a lorry was going, it's actually quite a fast road. And with the crest of the hill, crashed into the back of a mother's car going to the local school. Um, on a monthly occasion, on a monthly, um, there's some sort of accident or near miss. This morning, there was another near miss where an Atchison and Glover lorry went to pull in. There was a car sitting at the fuel pumps. And because it's a Maxall garage, a lot of the lorries have Maxall fuel cars. And the lorry pulled on the was trying to pull in, but couldn't get into the front of the filling station due to the car there. And then we heard the skid marks of a car that was coming from Oma towards Enniskillen to break hard to avoid the lorry. 
and it's no longer coming car coming due to the crest of the hill. The lorry pulled in and filled and left, but again, whenever anybody's leaving the shop that is parked in our parking that we have there, they cannot see clearly up the right hand side of the road when lorries are parked there. So what we proposed is that we um, instate a one-way system where cars and lorries come in at the bottom. The outside of the service station, because it just melts into the road, will be curbed properly to stop anybody pulling up outside, alongside the road. They will have to drive into the car park. So they will come in through the bottom entrance, uh, and then they will be able to circulate around and park the lorries up, come in to use the shop, fuel up, and leave the site safely. So, you know, this is something I know it's going to cost money for myself to do this. Is it going to make the shop any busier? No, but it is going to make it safer. And that's the bottom line in this. And we don't want any accidents out there. Thank you very much, Andrew. Is that you finished? Well, I think that's. No, no, that's fine. fine. Thank you very much for the presentation. Members, any questions? No. I think you explained yourself very well. Thank you very much. You can dress back to you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Clockery, John. There's a, uh, you heard the plan officer refer that there's 11 conditions. I think you're more than happy to comply with all the conditions if you get the plan information. Oh, without a doubt. You know, there's no there's no problem with, with the curb and that's what I want. I want a safe side. I okay. want people to drive into it and leave safely. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Any, any further people? No, I think you can head back to your seat, Andrew. Thank you very much. Seamus, over to you. Right. You've heard the presentation from Seamus. You've heard the update from Mr. Short, the applicant, right? Okay. Councillor Rene. Okay. Um, sorry, Sir, I'll, 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 I'll bring, bring you in afterwards. Adoption of the sorry. proposal. You're proposing? Yeah. Okay. Earl, sorry, I just cut across yeah. you there. Uh, just in case you forget about me when I'm online. No, I, well, yeah, I would never there, forget but... about you, Earl. I <laughs> might overlook you, but I'll never forget about you. Okay, can I just uh, second the proposal by Councillor Alan Rene MBE? Right, that's okay. Take your hand down. Thank you. I'll... You can take your. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Campbell, Glenn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I suppose I just wanted to um, just query one thing. Uh, the amended or the supporting statement came in, as you said, as our officer said there, uh, after the initial objections were raised and it wasn't followed up with any further. Uh, would that would that supporting statement also have allayed the issues around road service? Because they also um, indicated they were recon or content, or was there a revisement? I think there was a revisement of plans, wasn't there? Yes, sir. The road, ser road service have now ended. And that included the chairman and yeah. the one-way system and that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's all I had to check. Thank you, Chairman. Well, Thank you. That's happy. Thank you very much, Glenn. Right, I've got a proposal from Councillor Rainey, seconded by Councillor Thompson, and that's to go with his officer's proposal to approve. Are we all agreed? Earl, you seconded. Councillor Mahan, David, yeah, are you happy? Yes, yeah, happy, Chair. David, could you turn your your um, screen on? Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. Yeah, you need to, otherwise we oh, don't yeah. have yes, Chair, happy, that's to, happy, yeah. That's okay. That's all right. That's unanimous. Uh, Seamus, back so, to you. Yes, uh, members. So, application number LA10, 2023 1346F. The recommendation of officers was to approve planning permission subject to 11 conditions and members have agreed with this recommendation and granted approval for the proposal. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> David, you need to keep your, your camera on because that means hey, let's just know that you're there. Um, Sorry. Right, all the application. Thank you very much. Right, uh, we'll go on to application number two and that's LA10 bar 2023 bar 1399 and it's a nightline. Uh, Darren? Okay, members, so uh, moving on then, application number two, LA10 2023-1399, is for a dwelling and garage on the Loch Macquarie Road in Carrick Moor. The applicant is G. McDonald with the Agent Building Design Solutions. The recommendation then of officers is to refuse planning permission to the reasons listed within the report uh, and subject to two reasons. Uh, members will recall the application was presented before you 
and was deferred for a, visit, a site visit. Uh, so a written report of the site visit is attached to the report members. Uh, so our application is now presented for decision. So again, just take you through the details, members. So on the screen then is the application site. Um, that's the site location plan that's been submitted by the agent. Uh, the site then is in the middle um, and is outlined in red. And I'll come into that in more detail in a second though. The company in the application was a block plan. Uh, this is the original block plan that had been submitted. And you can see the uh, site then identified with the red arrow. So it's a triangular shaped plot uh, with green circles around it, which indicate the existing trees. And the rectangle then is labeled as a potential dwelling. Access then will come in off the minor road uh, opposite the two houses, 303 and 305. So that plan was amended then, members, and the house was pulled forward on the site. And you can see it's located more towards the road junction. Uh, with the site boundaries then remaining as previously applied for and previously submitted. So just to be clear, in terms of the comparison between two, the two, so on the left was the original block plan, and on the right then was the revised block plan, which was submitted in this applicant's supporting statement. And you can see the house has been pulled forward from its original position up into the area where there's an it labelled as an existing storage area. So going into the details then of the application site, this is the uh, Ordnance Survey map, and you can see the yellow star then identifies the location of the, the site uh, with the roads then surrounding it, and the other buildings then are, are shown in the plan as well, uh, and indicated by the rectangles and uh, coloured shapes. Putting that onto the flyover map, <coughs> then you can see the site, uh, the yellow star, again, the other buildings then in the area and the locality and the surrounding fields and roads. And then just to go through a few images, um, members will recall from the site visit uh, the, the area, but just to go through it in detail then. So if we are starting on the left of the site, so up the minor road where the red star is, and you turn around and you're looking back down towards the road junction, the site will be on your left-hand side and the existing buildings then will be on your right-hand side. So that's the view then, looking down that Lock and Crory Road, the existing buildings on the right and our site then is at the bottom on the left hand side of the slide as we just go down the road you can see that's the proposed site entrance on the left and you can see the second house then number 305 on the right hand side the road then goes down and bends around towards the, the junction then with the, the main road and that's a google street view image looking into the site um, uh, from the proposed access location and then moving just on down the road towards the junction. And then that's uh, an image then of the, the access then with the main road and looking down towards the other buildings in the area. So if we just go back there, sorry, members. So if you go on to the main road and turn right, members, that's the view then heading down the B46, the main road, and you can see the Houses on the left on the hill and then also down towards the, the adjacent house at the junction. So if we keep going on down the road, um, sorry, if we keep going on down the road and then I'll turn and come back up to show you the, the, the images from that direction. So that's us turned around looking back up towards the junction on the site, which is identified by the red arrow. And you can see number four then on the right hand side on the Devesky Road. Moving along. That's the junction then with the Devesky Road and number four on the right hand side. The site then is further along on the left. And that's just moving past that house, heading towards the junction with the site then in front of you. And then you come up to the junction. So just in that slide image, uh, you can see on the right hand side, members, there is a, a bus shelter. And I know the agent does refer to that uh, in his speaking rights previously and also in the supporting information. So there's a bus shelter on the right hand side and then the buildings on the left hand side. So in terms of policy context members, it's an application under HUU 13 of our plan strategy, uh, rounding off and infilling. So it's not an, uh, um, an application that meets those policy and is not a rounding off opportunity for four reasons. Uh, specifically criteria A, it not result in the rounding off of a gap within an existing group of buildings outside a farm. Criteria C is not visually linked with an existing group of buildings constituting a minimum of four buildings, three of much, three of which must be dwellings within their own defined cartilage. And D then is a twofold test, but it's the second bit really that the application falls foul of that it's not bounded on at least two sides with other development in the cluster. 
and F then is that the proposed development cannot be absorbed into existing cluster through rounding off and consolidation and will significantly alter its existing character and visually intrude into the open countryside. So just to take you through the agent's supporting information as well, members, I'm sure he'd want to refer to these himself. If he wants to keep a note of the, the numbers, I can go back to them. So again, you have the original block plan and the revised block plan, which was presented previously, and that shows the position of the dwelling. There's also an image then um, showing the location of the site in red, and it identifies the other buildings in the area. And you can see Curtilage 1 on the left, where there's two buildings, Curtilage 2, where there's two buildings, and say the bus stop building, which was pointed out earlier. You then have the junction of the road as a local focal point, and then Curtilage 3, where there's one building. In terms of the, the two additional slides then presented by the applicant, uh, the top one states this image shows the focal point when approaching from the first junk road junction. The second junction is seen just below this text. This shows clearly an existing focal cluster for this area. And the bottom slide then says this image shows the focal point when approaching the second road junction. The site is enclosed and a proposed dwelling directly behind the existing trees will be fully absorbed. Note the existing bus stop would only be located at a local focal point and not at any random location. So then, members, if we just go back to the, the summary of the reasons for refusal to go through those in more detail uh, for you. Criteria C and criteria D really are the, the key ones uh, in terms of the, the issues before you. Uh, criteria C requires a minimum of four buildings, three of which must be dwellings. And criteria D requires the site to be bounded on at least two sides with other development in the cluster. And it's important members to note that it's other development in the cluster. It's not just other development. So in terms of the criteria C, as I say, there must be a minimum of four buildings, three of which must be dwellings within their own defined cartilage. The policy clarification assists members in what that means. Uh, and when the application was being written and taken through independent examination, the clarification and supporting information was very clear what that means. Uh, the careful positioning of an additional dwelling within an existing group of buildings has the potential to reinforce locally distinctive settlement patterns and local identity without detracting from rural character. So the whole point of this policy is that you put a new dwelling, an additional dwelling, within an existing group of buildings. So in this case, members, when you're looking at the aerial images and also on site, there are other buildings in the area. Uh, and the agent is seeking to make the case that there are three dwellings within their own defined curtilage. So planners agree with the agent that there are two. There's one across the road and the second one across the road. But the third one then, number four, which is further along the road, is approximately 155 or 160 metres or there or thereabouts, uh, and is not visually linked or reads with that other, uh, those other buildings to create a cluster. The separation between the two of 150 plus metres means that it's not a cluster and they don't read together. You may see them in the landscape, but they don't, they don't read as a cluster or as a group. What you see is number one and two, and then a big gap over to the number four, which is the, the house on the Vesky Road. In terms of the second issue, which is important uh, for members to be fully informed of, so it's criteria D is a two-fold test, so it requires the site to provide a suitable degree of enclosure and is bounded on at least two sides with other development in the cluster. And as the same members, it's important that it's not at least two sides with other development, it's with other development in the cluster. So there must be a cluster and you must be bounded on two sides with it. As the cluster is taken as four buildings, three of which must be dwellings within their own defined cartilage. And again, the policy clarification assists members, it must be an additional dwelling within an existing group of buildings. In this case, members, you'll note from the site visit and also from the images, the site itself is separated from number 303 and 305, the two houses across the road by that road. So it's not bound on that side by the other development because the road splits you off from it. Again, the uh, bus shelter then is on the other side of the, the Craigan Road, uh, the other side of the road. So it's not bound with other development in the cluster. And the other dwelling then, number four, is over 150 metres away. So it's certainly not bound with with that dwelling. So members, for the reasons listed within the report and in line with the wording of the transition arrangements uh, and the regulations, when reading both the DDP and plan strategy together, the proposal does not accord with the LDP for the reasons stated, and there are no other material considerations to indicate that it should be approved currently to the LDP. 
The application is recommended for refusal for the following reasons. So it's not a rounding off, it's not an infill, and will alter rural character by reason of a build up of development. Thanks very much, Darren. We now have representation by the planning agent, Paul Bradley, uh, via WebEx. Paul, you've yes. gone through the procedure yes. before. I don't have yes. to tell you how to suck eggs. You have 10 minutes, uh, or up to 10 minutes. Uh, you may or may not get further questions, and thereafter, we'll go back to the committee. Okay, you ready to go? Yes. Okay, Paul, away you go. Okay, first I'd like to thank the plan committee for arranging a site visit to allow further consideration of this application. At the September meeting, I presented most of our case for this application, and I will only summarise my comments and reinforce some of them after considering the Council's report based on the site visit. The application should be considered purely as a rounding off application. The planning report is only concerned with criteria A, C, D and F from policy House 13. I would emphasise to the committee that all planning policy is based on the interpretation of the person reading the policy. Criteria A, the proposed dwelling will result in round off the gap within an existing group of buildings which are outside of the farm. We previously submitted our statement with images which Darren has showed you on the screens. And these clearly show that the site is located between two houses with garages to the west and a bus shelter on the east, which will round off a gap. Policy does not state what type of buildings have to create a gap or how many are required to create that gap. The site meeting would show that the view from the south of the Lock Mokori Road Junction clearly shows that our site is located between a group of buildings. In criteria C, the proposed dwelling is visually linked with an existing group of buildings to constitute a minimum number of four buildings, three of which must be dwellings. Again, the site visit would show the members that on the approach from the north direction from both the Craigan Road and the Lock McCrory Road, there is a very clear visual linkage between the group of houses 303, 305 and number 4, the Vesky Road. On approach from the north, you are naturally viewing a cluster of dwellings I'd also point out that number four, the Vesky Road, when measured from our proposed site to their site boundary, is only actually 82 metres, not when you're measuring from numbers 303 or 305, but from the site, it's only 82 metres away. Policy does not state any distances for visual linkage, and this is unique in that the visual linkage can be viewable from three different roads and three different approaches when you're considering this site. Criteria D states that the site provides a suitable degree of enclosure and is bounded on at least two sides with all our development in the cluster. If the plan and assessment of this criteria is to be accepted, then they state that despite the fact that there are two houses and sheds to the west and a bus shelter to the east along with number four of Esky Road, they are not classed as development and do not bound the site because of the roads either side. This has been stated on a number of occasions. Having viewed the site, the committee needs to look very carefully at the wording of the criteria, which states that the site should be bounded by development on at least two sides. A key point to the policy is that a site should be located at a junction of roads when viewed from a public vantage point. At nearly every junction of roads in the countryside, development appears on both sides of the road, as is traditional in most rural locations. The planning reports and what was repeated at the site visit is that planning or excluding the buildings on either side of our site because there is a road between our site and the buildings. If that is really the position that the Council are going to adopt going forward, then most potential sites at the junctions of roads are going to fail as no site will be bounded by development because of the roads in between. I would say that the proposed site and the buildings either side are bounded between each other by the road and that actually found, formed the bound. When we previously suggested that the roads either side of our site were development, this was purely because the planning reports were dismissing all of the buildings either side of our site because of the roads in between. And why the legal planning definition under the Planning Act or in Ireland states that development is the carrying out of a building, engineering, mining or other operations. Roads are classified as development under planning law. However, the previous argument was hypothetical, as the planning officers on the previous report were discounting the very obvious developments surrounding our site because of the roads in between. 
The planning report's interpretation of the criteria is negative, and it cannot possibly be discounted that the site is bounded on two sides by some form of development. I would like to think that when the committee members viewed the site, they clearly seen multiple houses, outbuildings, and a bus shelter surrounding the site, and in the wider context, number four, the Vesky Road. Criteria F states that the both land can be absorbed into existing cluster through rounding off and consolidation. The planning report's justification of this criteria again discounts the existing buildings within the cluster and states that the site does not round off the cluster. Policy does not state how it should be rounded off within the cluster, or indeed what makes up a cluster. On the planning statement submitted as part of the application, there are the images directly south of the road junction that surrounds the site, and from the view reading east to west, you have a long established bush shelter, Craigan Road, the site, Lock McCrory Road, and then number three, 303 and 305. And from this view, it is very clear that the proposed site is rounding off and more so consolidating within this existing cluster. I'd also like to highlight the planning report accepts that the site is well screened within its surroundings, and more so, it states that the site is not unduly prominent in the landscape. In other words, carefully designed, modest dwelling located in this site will fully absorb within the cluster and may not even be seen from most of the public views. When reading the policy criteria against the site with a view to approving the site, it is clear that this site does meet the criteria required. Buildings and developed roads cannot be discounted, and the site visit would show members that these buildings and roads exist at this cluster and cannot magically disappear as part of the assessment because there's a road in between. Policy HOU 13, for the most part, does not provide much by way of policy clarification, and it is therefore open to interpretation. However, what it does clarify is the careful positioning of an additional dwelling within an existing group of buildings has the potential benefit of reinforcing locally distinctive settlement patterns and local identity without detracting from rural character. Our proposed application site would do exactly that and provide a fam local family home around an existing focal point where existing settlement already exists. It is bounded on two sides by buildings and development, and I would urge the committee to consider that this application does meet all the criteria of the policy, and it is certainly within the spirit of the whole policy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Finish within the time. Thank you. Members, any questions for Paul? Don't see anybody uh, jumping. Uh, Paul, thank you very much indeed for that. We'll go back to Darren. Uh, yes, Member, just in relation to some of the comments received there, um, just to, to clarify and confirm that, um, that the policy is being interpreted consistently by planning officers, both the previous PPS 21 policy and this new P uh, policy, HUU 13, rounding off. There is a change between the two, uh, but officers are being consistent in approaching the, all applications on that. The policy HUV 13 has led to other approvals um, and there are ones going through being granted. So this suggestion that they will be bound by roads and won't be approved is, is flawed. It's not true. Um, there are other applications that have been refused, members, um, under the old policy. Uh, and those applications were similar to this in that they were bound by roads. Those applications went to appeal and were unsuccessful. So there's a consistency here, uh, issue members, is the first thing I would point out, that if we are going to make a decision, we should make a consistent one. And if we uh, make one today that conflicts with those other decisions, we'll have to explain to those other people what has changed, because this is a significant change. Uh, in terms of the other buildings in the area, the agency are discounting those, we're not. The planning officers have considered those all. The uh, argument being presented that number four is part of this cluster, is not accepted or agreed with. Um, there is agreement that there are two buildings, two houses, and those houses cluster with the site. That's no problem. It's the third one. The view of officers is it does not cluster. From building to building is 150 odd metres. And that's the important thing. The whole point and the spirit of HUU 13, when it was being written, when it went through independent examination and all of the background papers, etc., are all about reinforcing an ex existing group of buildings that you can put a house into that existing group of buildings and it will not change the character of the area. So it's buildings you're looking at. So they may have big gardens, things like that there, but it's a separation distance between the buildings. It's important. And finally, then, members, just in relation to the issue of the bound on two sides by the road, 
Again, the policy is written to round off existing buildings. Um, the idea that it might have a road on two sides, its development within the cluster is the policy test. All sites in the countryside generally will have a road along one side, and that's no problem. Um, planning officers are issuing approvals on the delegated authority for sites under this permission because they meet the policy test. They are bound on two sides. It's not a it's not a constraint or prohibiting approvals. The idea, though, that you would approve a site because there's a road on two sides and that is developed in the cluster is a significant departure from the spirit of the policy and why the policy was written. Uh, as I say, I keep going back to this idea of rounding off buildings and it's buildings you need to be uh, visually linked with and clustered with. Um, it's not roads. So if we go back, members, just to confirm, the agents drawing there under criteria D, so bound at least two sides of the development in the cluster. So in this case here, the view of the uh, officers is the 303 and 305, the two houses across the road. So they're not bound with those because of the road. On the right hand side, you have the bus shelter. And it's not bound with that because of the road as well. The third house then is the number four is further away on up the road. So there is no cluster. And in any event, the site's not bound with those other buildings because of the road. Uh, okay, Darren. Graham Job. Uh, any further questions for Darren? No further questions. It's decision time. Councillor McCann, Stephen. Chair, hey, Darren, take us back to, is it, is it slide 13, 39 possibly with, uh, no. with the distances marked out on it from, yeah. Uh, the distance separation I distance. Back, you just yeah. passed it there, sorry, go on, but I just. Okay, sorry. Maybe I've gone past it a bit, I think. Uh, you, you have gone yeah. past it, it was just showing the, was it 160 metres you had referenced from the house to the two houses? And that one there. How far do we know, Darren, is it from the house at the bottom to the bus shelter? So this is the house in Devesky Road? Yeah. Over to the bus there? I, I never measured it, okay, so I'll be honest, but uh, if you take 155 metres to number two, so you'd be, what, over 100 metres at least to it? But uh, I can't give you a definite answer, but it's well over 100 metres going on that, that distance. But fair darn to describe the bus shelter as a building. I'm just looking at the clarification here that the building is a permanent structure with a roof and walls. Yes. Stephen, have you any further comment? Uh, not just, I'm just sorry, Sharon, not just yet. I, I, know, I know you're Thank commentating, you, so Thank right, you. that's okay. Any further members want to um, question Darren? Right, I need to galvanize you. Not put you in a tank, but actually uh, get you into action. Right, Councillor Crockley, John. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was there on the site visit, and and uh, I've heard the representations. From the from the planning agent, but I I really can't see how we apply our policy to this planning application on this occasion, and I, I'm going to have to recommend we go with the officer's recommendations. Okay, thank you very much. So that's a proposal to go with the officer's recommendation. Do I have a seconder? 
Mm -hmm. Councillor McCann, Stephen, first of all. Thanks, Chair. Can I take a clarification maybe from the from Darn in terms of the comments that the agent provided uh, for Section A of the HUE 13, the dwelling will result in the rounding off of the gap. If you look at the that same slide, it was if you look at the houses to the left, and then you've got the gap, and you've got the built bus shelter, which is on the right. You know, that's what I'm struggling with in terms of that constitutes a gap within the within a cluster. You know, yep. I'm pretty convinced that it does, to be honest, Chair. If we can just see it again, Darren, if possible, just to again. Yeah. Yeah. If I could just clarify before you, you go, just to make sure uh, the policy at U13 is the development of a new dwelling as a rounding off will be permitted where all of the following criteria are met. So there's a list of criteria A to H, and you must meet them all. If you don't meet them all, you don't meet the policy. So, yes, you may think that it is a rounding off of a gap. That's fine. But then you also have the other criteria. You must meet those as well. Okay. And one of those is the four. Uh, buildings, three of which are dwellings, and bound on other sides. So just to be clear on that, but certainly which slide? It was was it slide thirty nine again? That's the distance one. That one. I, I think we can see it now. So you've got the you've got the buildings on the left, the gap, and then the bus shelter, which constitutes a building. The gap in the middle, which is at a focal point, which could be the junction, the traffic right. to the junction. Existing group of buildings appears at a focal point at a junction of roads or at the landscape when viewed from public vantage. Well, that's the proposed dwelling is visually linked with an existing group of buildings constituting a minimum of four buildings, three of which must be dwellings with each their own cartilage. This is where I'm struggling with the, with the distance, Darren. You know, with the the bus shelter till the house on is it Esky Road, Esky Road, Esky Road, and the and maybe if you can provide commentary on the uh, the agent's uh, statement about visually linkage and 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 distances and, and policies and and you know it's not referenced in the policy in terms of what constitutes being visually linked in terms of distance and number mm -hmm. and number you know that kind of way yeah you know so yeah listen these these um, these policies couldn't include distances because every site you go to will be different and the next one of these we have before you will be different uh, and that's that's why yeah, that's and to be honest, it's better that there isn't a number because that's a black and white issue which removes judgment uh, and the point of this policy is to interpret it and use your judgment however that judgment needs to be reasonable and uh, you know as, as I think Philip said you can't live, live in the land of Humpty Dumpty so you have to look at it and, and be reasonable when your judgment's being put forward I think the difficulty with this application and the, the reason why members are struggling with it is because that separation distance really is very, very difficult to reasonably conclude that number four links with number two. And that separation distance is just so great that there aren't three dwellings with their own defined cartilage as a cluster around this site. The, the bus shelter, yes, would be another building, but as I say, there must be three dwellings with their own defined cartilage. And as I say, it's the separation distance between the buildings, between the dwellings, that's important because I keep I keep stressing this. What you're doing is you're uh, putting the new house in an existing group of buildings. And that's the key point of this policy test. Yeah, I think we can address the other issues in terms of this policy, Darren, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, it's the it's the four buildings. Yeah, uh, you know, I can I can comfortably uh, counter the other ones. Mm -hmm. Four buildings. Three much much be dwellings in their own defined cartilage. Yeah. You know, looking at that slide there to me, you know, it, it, it reads as a as a cluster. You know, that reads as a cluster to me, Darren. Yep, just remember, members, we're not looking at an early image. I'll just take you back here because um I don't want to, to be honest, the decisions made on early images. It's the no, I views on the ground. And yeah. I know you weren't at the safest member, but yeah. the uh, if I go back to the image. So you've got the one that can assist you. So is it so that's back up towards Craigmore itself. You're looking then at the number four on the right hand side, and their gardening goes down to the road. You can see the trees, the road then continues on. The site then is identified up with the red arrow and the other houses then across the road. And as I say, it's the gap between number four and that bungalow on the left that you are looking at. 
And the idea is to position another dwelling within an existing group of buildings. Uh, and uh, so if we move along the road, you can see clearly there's a, there's a large gap there between number four, which is on the right hand side of the slide, and those bungalows on the left with the site then at the junction in front of you. And I think that's why it's, you know, the debate is, is being considered, but on the ground, clearly officers, in terms of a consistent approach with other applications that have been approved and refused, that separation distance would be, would separate them out. Uh, and as I say, the other appeals that we've had on, on the previous policy would be similar, that there was that gap and there wasn't a cluster of three houses. Stephen? Uh, that's me for now, Chair. Have you made a proposal, no? Not just yet. Oh, that's okay. Right, next up, Councillor Robinson, Paul. Thank you, Chair. I don't know how it's going to meet the criteria, but I'm going to go with second John's proposal. Okay, so you're seconding um, Councillor Crocker's yep. proposal to go with the office recommendation. Okay. And Sir Devine Gallagher, Roisin. Sir. Um, was there on that day we were out looking at the site? Um, it's quite a unique from from where, where, where we were standing. You know, for me, new till planning and stuff. Um, you know, I could see that the, that the trees, surrounding trees, were there. The junctions were there. Access was there. Um, it, for me, it just looked like, you know, that it was missing a house. Um, and the fact that you couldn't even see the house then, if it if it was built, um, I don't think it'll have any impact um, on 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 anything in particular. Um, just for me, just as as I say, new to planning um, and being on the first planning site, um, it just felt like it would 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 go in there lovely, <laughs> um, but obviously um, there are other things to. Um, suppose I'm just unsure of my decision. Um, what to do, really? Um, I just all I, I can say, Roisin, is um, have to uh, overturn all the recommendation yeah, for that, refusals, yeah. Yeah. as Councillor McCann Stephen has looked at as well. So it's not just trying to overcome one or two; it's overcome. I know, all of them. I know, and I know. that's the same for any applicant. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. It's just on, I suppose, um, going to the actual site and seeing it in real terms. Um, I suppose, as somebody new to this, I suppose I'm struggling with why not, I suppose. Um, why, why can't it go there? Um, it has, you know, visually, it's, it's, it looks like it'll, it'll go in there nicely. Um, I, so that's, that's enough. Um, that, that, um, That'll do me for now. Thank you. Thank you. Right, members, I've got a proposal, uh, duly seconded, proposed by Councillor Clockery, um, seconded by Councillor Robinson, to go with the officer recommendation to refuse. I'm going to put that to the floor now. Could I have an indication of all in favour? If you raise your hand. And on WebEx, if you put your request up. Councillors Mahan and Thompson. Okay. And I am going to go with it as well. That is, could you keep your hands up? Okay. That's five in favour. Could I have those against, please? Raise your hands. Right, I'm counting one, two, three, four. And those abstaining, please? Three abstentions. So I have five in favour, four against, and three abstentions. So the proposal um, stands. It goes forward. Okay, Darren. Thank you. Um, and we may note who was for and against. So that's councillors McCrockery, Robinson, 
Uh, Mahan, Thompson and Irvine for abstentions are McGrath, Rainey and McGuire. All others are against. Okay, no, for the note. So, Darren. Yeah, members, so application 10 2023 uh, The recommendation was to refuse plan permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to two reasons. Members have refused the application for those two reasons. Um, I just take the opportunity, members, as well, to invite the applicant in to see if there are any alternatives, uh, if there's any other land available. Uh, planning officers are willing to meet on site and, and explore those if, if that would assist them in securing a house. So I'll make that offer out right there. That's okay. Thank you very much for that. I'm sure um, Paul will note that. Thank you very much indeed. Right. We are moving on. Application three was deferred. So we're going on to application number four, and that's LA 10 bar 2023 bar 1819, and it's a night line. Um, Darren? Oh, sorry, Seamus. This is like moving chairs. Okay, members. So uh, the next application is application number four, LA 10 2023 18190. It's an outline application for an infill dwelling and garage at approximately 50 metres east of number 58 Tremor Road, Pintna. Um, the applicant is Mr. M. Keyes, and the recommendation is to refuse planning permission for the reasons within the report and subject to two reasons. So we have the Slide showing the application site identified in red, uh, submitted location plan with the application. Uh, the site sits adjacent to number 58 or more road with number 54 a short distance to the east. Uh, slide six is aerial imagery showing a bird's eye view of the situation, uh, the yellow star indicating or identifying the application site. Uh, this is the view down the road past number 54 on our left um, with the domestic shed under construction adjacent to number 54. Uh, this shows a more up-to-date photograph of the situation on the ground with the shed almost, or you would have to assume, finished construction at this stage. Um, it's important to note, I suppose, that the access uh, as shown to the shed is of the existing access, it doesn't have an independent access of its own, and it does, as approved, share the curtilage of the dwelling. Um, that's uh, another image of the, the access. We can see here this slide shows um, the approved shed at this at number 54. Now you can see uh, from the previous photographs that the access position differs somewhat. From what was approved and um, this is important as i'll go into on down the line uh, in respect of the policy and um, but it is important to note as we can see again on the uh, photograph that it does operate or occupy the same cartilage it's not on a on a separate cartilage <coughs> pardon me and um, so the application site as you can see on this uh, google street view image is Further down the road on the left hand side, it's fairly well obscured by uh, the crest of the road and the intervening hedges. Um, this image shows it on approach in the other direction towards Fintna. Um, number 58 uh, is in the foreground here on the right hand side. And you can see another house on the opposite side of the road. You can just about see it on the left hand side of that image. Uh, again, we're back to aerial photography here to better illustrate the, the situation on the, on the ground. Um, the application site is, as previous indicated, uh, are shown by the yellow star. While there is an approval for a dwelling on the portion of the wider field identified by the red star, uh, application number LA10-2020-0840, uh, outline application, no reserve matters or full application has been received for this site, so we have purely an outline approval. Um, the issue, I suppose, presented here is that, uh, as required by policy HOU 13, rounding off and infilling, the proposal is not considered a rounding off opportunity, as the site is not at a focal point uh, or within a cluster, with the existing buildings being very dispersed uh, and scattered with gaps and visual breaks between them. 
Uh, it also fails in that it is not visually linked with a minimum of four buildings, three of which must be dwellings, each within their own defined cartilage, uh, failing criteria A and B of the rounding off section of HOU 13. Um, the site is between, as we can see, 54 and 58, two detached dwellings on their own cartilage. As I've stated, 54 has a detached uh, garage within its cartilage. It doesn't occupy an independent cartilage. Um, another dwelling and garage sits on the other side of the road, uh, but has no visual relationship with the site, as you can see in the previous images. Um, you can see it, but to see this 54 and 58 and the site all in one shot, one viewpoint, it's difficult, if not impossible. Um, so with the site, uh, there's no visual relationship with the site or aforementioned properties due to separation distances, mature trees and hedging, and it therefore fails criteria C. Uh, it's accepted that the site would integrate a dwelling, and is not, but it is not bound on two sides with other development. It's bound by 50, on one side by 58, but not on the other side, uh, and is contrary to criteria D of the policy uh, for round and off. As detailed, there is no cluster of development um, so the proposal cannot be absorbed through rounding off or consolidation. The proposal is also considered to fail as an infill dwelling, the second part of HOU 13, paragraph 2, as the gap must be within an otherwise substantial and continuously built up frontage. Now, this is defined as a line of at least three buildings, each within their own cartilage. Uh, again, I go back to the, the situation on the ground with the approved and recently constructed domestic shed or garage. Um, it occupies the same cartilage as the, the dwelling itself. Um, so that's considered a key issue here. Um, we have to consider the policy as a whole, admittedly, but the application was applied for as an infill dwelling, and it doesn't meet the requirement of having the substantial, continuously built up frontage. Um, I'll move on then to slides. That's, that slide there shows the previous approval on or the Extant approval on the adjacent site under the reference number, if you wouldn't be able to see it, but it's LA 10 Um These slides here are presented or have been presented by the agent, and he has asked that we make these available. So you can see that they're showing the entrance from the Drumore Road. As I've touched on, the entrance point itself is the same entrance that serves the dwelling. This configuration isn't entirely as was approved but it doesn't change the situation uh, on the ground that the shed occupies the same cartilage and has the same access point. Um, that's another slide that the agent has asked for us to share, or another image, sorry. And this is a concept plan that he has provided during the processing of the case uh, in support of the case. Uh, it shows the existing situation on the ground in terms of 58 and 54. Uh, and then he has a concept showing the proposed dwelling on one side and the approved dwelling on the other. It's important, I suppose, at this stage to note that there, is, there are foundations in to the rear of number 58, uh, which is the leftmost dwelling on this image, um, but it's, they're at foundation stage and no CLUD or any other application has been received to determine their lawfulness and they, don't, uh, they wouldn't constitute a building in any event. So uh, for the reasons listed within the report and using the wording of the transitional arrangements and the, when reading both the DPP together, the proposal does not accord with the policy for the reasons stated and there are no other material considerations to indicate that it should be approved contrary to the LDP. It is recommended that the application is refused for the following reasons and those being not a rounding off opportunity and not an infill opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. Well, uh, I think if you go on, we have speaking rights. <clears throat> yep. Representation by the planning engine, Jonathan McKernan. If you dress forward to one of the seats, Jonathan. I think you're yeah. new to the committee, so if you do your introductions when I put you live, please, uh, if you've been listening in, you have up to 10 minutes to present. You don't have to use all the 10 minutes. And you may or may not be asked questions at the end of your presentation. Is that okay? If you sit down there. I think if we can, 
We can accommodate you. We will set you up beside Councillor Campbell, if Councillor Campbell doesn't mind. Okay, I'll go over it again. If you could introduce yourself when I make you live, you have up to 10 minutes to actually present. You don't have to use all the 10 minutes, but you will be kept strictly to 10 minutes. Thereafter, the committee may or may not ask you questions. If you have no further questions or everything is exhausted, I'll ask you to resume your seat and then we go uh, and do further representations. Are you happy enough? Right, okay. <clears throat> right, you're live now. And if you speak into the, yep. You go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan McKernan from McKernan Consultancy Services. We're the agents on this application. I'd just like to thank you for this opportunity to discuss it here today. First of all, um, I'd like to give you some background to the application. If we could maybe have the slide with the conceptual layout um, back there, Seamus, if you don't mind. Uh, the one, yeah, that one there, yeah. So I just want to, this site has been applied for as an infill dwelling. Uh, as Seamus says, number 54 there is an existing dwelling. Then we have the, the large domestic shed within adjacent to that. And obviously that's approved within the cartilage of number 54. And then you have a gap in which we have shown the potential for two dwellings there. And then you have number 58. Uh, the point we would make here is that the dash dwelling there just beside the shed, that's already approved, as Seamus says. And the applicant fully intends to develop that site. So that that application was actually approved on 14th of March this year. So it's just a few months since it was approved um, as an infill, as a gap site. So really the question here is what has changed since the first part of this site was approved? I'm just going to read you the conclusion of the planning report for the first site there, because I think it's particularly relevant. Um, conclusion. The proposal is considered acceptable in that the site meets the criteria of, criteria of PPS 21, as it is a gap capable of accommodating two number suitably sized dwellings within a substantial and continuously built up frontage. Sufficient private and usable amenity space can be provided within the site, and DFA roads are content that a safe means of access egress, egress can be achieved on the Dumour Road there would be limited um, impact on residential amenity and the character of the surrounding area. The application is, re is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. So a few months ago, this site, first site in the dash was considered acceptable. So um, under the infill policy, so really what has changed is the adoption of the new plan strategy, whereby each of the three buildings along the road with, um, with the gap in between and uh, must have an individual cartilage. Now we accept that the, the shed in itself doesn't have an approved individual cartilage, although as you drive along the Dumour Road, you've seen from the photographs there, the shed has concrete around it and the house has a lawn around it and there's a small hedge planted there, which gives the impression of separation while the cartilage itself is not strictly approved as separate cartilage. The point we would make is that this application was submitted slightly behind the other one. Now, the new plan strategy did have a transitional period of which this application falls outside. However, we'd ask for some flexibility, given that clearly once the initial outline approval is developed, then all arguments about cartilage fall away, simply because at that point, you'll have number 54, number 58, and the construction of the infill dwellings already approved each with three individual accesses and three individual cartilages. And at that point, 100% of the criteria is fully met as far as what we can see. And I think that's acknowledged slightly whenever you read the, the planning report that said there, um, there is planning permission for a new dwelling beside the site. However, there is no reserve matters approach approved for this site to date. No building work had commenced. Consequently, although there are a number of buildings along the road, there are only two cartilages. Therefore, the inference we could draw from that is that once this work has commenced and it's clear that the house is going ahead, there will be three cartilages and will fully meet the policy. What we're asking here is a degree of flexibility. We would argue that this site as a whole 
was assessed under the first application because the planning officer referred to it being suitable for two dwellings. And this really application is a follow up of that. The application was delayed slightly because with some ecological work to do. But um, what we could happen here is if this refusal goes ahead is that the applicant will then develop this site on its own at additional cost because you're going to have to obviously uh, excavate the site separately. It's going to have to create a single access, which is a lay-by off the side. Um, this would actually be a board of work because if the site went ahead later on, it would have to be then converted to paired access. It would have to bring in um, additional contractors to, to excavate again. So his preference would be that the two sites are approved at once and that site works and excavation works and the access as a paired access could be structured at the one time. Now, it appears to me, and I don't think there's really any argument that if this dwelling had been under construction at this time, we would fully comply with the policy. This is a slight anomaly where you're introduced a new policy and as with every new policy, there is some gray areas. Therefore, we'd ask for some flexibility and rather than have to wait till he partially constructs or fully constructs the other dwelling and then reapply, whereby three defined characters would clearly be there and there would be no argument. And we would ask you to prove it at this time to save the applicant both time and money and ultimately save planning service time as well and reassessing this at a later date. So that's our, our position on this. Thank you very much for your time and happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Finished within the time. Uh, members, any questions? Mr. McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair, and welcome, Jonathan. Uh, just a general question. John, see the site that's been uh, approved just a few months ago? Uh, is that in Mr. Key's ownership? Yes. And what's his plans for that site? What's his plans overall? Um, in terms of two sites, I'm just thinking, is it for well, is it family? It does mean to stress the point here that he really wants to develop, he wants the two sites developed together because it's going to be additional cost and really it's, it's, it makes more sense if we can develop the two together. So that's the point that he's asked me to do is to stress that his preference is that both sites be, be developed uh, together. So I, he's not here today, but that's all I can tell you is what he's told me. Okay, no, that's fair enough. Thank you. Any further? Oh, Councillor McClock, right? John? Yeah, I, I notice you're, you're bringing forward a proposed sign, but uh, the the application that's granted already is outlined, and, and this one here is outlined plan permission. So it's sort of, you're, you're a step in front of, of what we're looking at today with what, what the proposals are for, the, for this. For both, you're saying both of these sites are going to be developed at the same time. You know, why aren't they linked at this stage? Why didn't he bring them both in as a, as a full? We didn't bring it forward as um, a paired application initially because sites, the current site falls within 50 metres of a stream and it required an economic, ecological assessment. It's 48 metres away, whereas the first site didn't. So we brought forward one of them initially which was approved under as a gap site. And then we followed it up once the ecological work had been done and there was no risk identified to apply for the second one. Um, does that answer your question? Well, it, it's more just that the, you know, you're, you're showing us uh, as a committee, you're, you're saying this is what he plans to develop them both at the same time. But, Realistically, we're, all we're looking here at the moment is, is outlines. So you're not really giving us a great deal more. You know, you're showing us a, a, a sh an image. I was just wondering, you know, if, he, if he's planned to develop both of them at the same time, then then he must be at a slightly more advanced stage. Stage at this stage, you know, and I was wondering, is that is there a reason why is is he going to just hold it off before he goes goes further, or or, or what? You know, to to make it that both of them are going to go at the same time. Well. Um... Once the first one was approved, we didn't anticipate that the second one would be an issue. That was why he went ahead and applied for that now. Um, the reason, as I said, that he wants to develop the two together is purely because of cost and ease of construction. Um, if, I think if that's what you're asking me, sorry, I'm not. Um, the point we were making was that once 
one is developed in the, the issue brought forward here by planners of individual curtilage, which is sort of a gray area and has been for a while, I believe, um, is, is completely a non-issue at that point because then there becomes three individual curtilages. Any further questions? Just really a comment from the chair. I think it's a timing issue here. Um, you've actually fallen between old policies and new policies. Correct. And if this had been under the old policy, it would be straightforward. It's not. And the uh, interpretation now under the new policy is different. So it's not about um, possibilities. It's about realities. So uh, on the current policy, the reality is the outline um, person that's granted is not developed, and that's what it is on the ground. Um, also, we can't take into account the financial issues with regard to developers. That's down to you. We, we're more concerned with the policy issues here. And I think what you've already outlined is if the previous application was in and was started, there would be no issue. I think that's the point that the applicant is going to have to take on board uh, rather than us manipulate our policies. But that, that's for the committee to, to decide here. So if there's no further questions, I would ask you to withdraw. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, Seamus, rounding up. Well, I think uh, just uh, as you've uh, touched on yourself, Chair, um, the Upstand the extracts from the previous uh, the report on the previous approval uh, for 2022-840. The policy has changed, and Jonathan, uh, you know, has acknowledged that himself. Um, the wording of the policy, though, has changed, and the definition of what's a substantial and continu continuously built-up frontage has now changed, and that's really what is fatal to this proposal. Um, uh, the, the requirement of at least three buildings each within their own defined cartilage. So uh, while it may be a preference for the, the applicant to be able to construct two of the houses or two houses at the same time, it's still it's uh, a defence policy. As, as That's OK. Uh, my apologies. I have another representation from Mr. Tom Buchanan, MLA. So um, and he's online. I thought he was in person, but he's online. So uh, I'm going to bring that in and then we can have further discussion with regard to the planning officer. Tom, are you there? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Could you turn your camera on, please? Hold on. There you are. That's it. Um, you've been here before, but I explain. You have five minutes. There's no other public representatives here. You, you have up to the full five minutes to present uh, your case. There will be no questions for you. It's purely a representation for yourself, and then we'll go on for further discussion. So are you ready to start? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Right, um, ahead, please. Yeah, just very briefly, can I thank you and the committee for the opportunity to come and to uh, speak in support of this particular application today. And the agent certainly has addressed the issue. And I think from what we've seen today, that uh, there is an argument can be made that this is an unfull site. Although policy has changed somewhat from uh, the, the application perhaps was made, there is a, a an argument can be made that this is actually an unfull site. And with regards to the shade, we can st the, the shade in question, we can still also make the argument there that it has a separate cartilage, or, or as good as a separate cartilage, if you like, coming out onto the road. And um, it, it is unfortunate, obviously, that the, the um, dwelling that has already been approved that it hasn't commenced work because if it had then you would have had that uh, other entrance coming out that give you the three uh, uh, the, the, the three entrances or the three different cartilages as the policy states for. But I think whenever you're in this situation where you have uh, a new policy comes in and the uh, the application at the stage that is in, I think there has to be some little bit of flexibility shown by committee on this particular issue, because uh, as it has been rightly said, um, this actually is falling between two students because of the new policy come in, and therefore I think that there needs to be some little flexibility shown to the um, 
uh, to the applicant, if you like, in this situation, because, um, you know, if, uh, as we said, if the other building had been commenced, then uh, there wouldn't have been uh, a difficulty here uh, within this. And that has been well highlighted and set out by the um, by the agent. And uh, again, why that the site in question now had been delayed until now on bringing forward because of the other uh, issues surrounding it that uh, took that bit more time. So I think on all of that, that um, I think there is room for movement on this where uh, it could be brought forward as an approval. And again, that is an issue for the uh, the committee. But I would say to committee that on this particular issue, there is, there is room for movement on this uh, because of the uh, the new policy that's brought in, where this sits within that, and uh, uh, just the the unfortunate circumstances we find ourselves in. And the question is, is do we penalise uh, the the applicant? simply because that he has been unfortunate to fall into such a uh, situation as is in. And I don't think that that, that is actually the, uh, that, that should actually uh, be the case because we're looking here at sustainable development within the countryside and uh, the need for that. And therefore, I think when you take all into consideration right across the board, then um, I think that uh, there's no reason why that uh, we can't be found to bring this forward as an approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, Tom. That was finished within the time, and there'll be no questions for you. So thank you for your representation. Seamus, I'm going back to you just to finish off rounding up any questions by members. So, uh, members, application number LA10-2023-1819, the recommendation of officers is to refuse planning permission subject to two reasons. It's okay. Do you want uh, Paul, right, you come in first of all. Paul. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Chair. And, and members, it's it's just to be clear, um the the shed doesn't have a separate curtilage. Um there's two two buildings here within their own curtilage. The shed forms a part of the cur curtilage with the with the dwelling. It doesn't sit on its own curtilage. It hasn't been approved as a separate curtilage, and even in the, the way it's been developed slightly differently than approved. It still doesn't sit within its own cartilage. So there's two buildings um, within their own cartilages, not three. So it, it, it certainly isn't, and a fairly clear cut for me, it certainly isn't an unfilled dwelling. I think members slightly different than what normally comes before us. It is within the grasp of, of the applicant. They carry out some works here of the other permission. Um, construct the walls, put the roof in the building um, after he gets his plan of permission, and then this this application, you know, can go forward, and 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 potentially the both sides could be developed then and finished off together. So I think for me it's just premature. The the, the application can be approved under delegated authority at a later stage, um, if the works are carried out to the site that's approved. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor McCann. Stephen. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Seamus, can you take us back to the to the block plan again? Uh, you see, just back to the to the slide before. Sorry, see that slide? I just back to the way. Sorry, there's a, a slide showing an aerial picture, and there's a yeah, that one there. Would you go back, please? I don't know. No. That one there. What's the situation with the with the site? that is started behind, I think it's a 58, it's a house on the left. So what's the situation with the site on the, so cartilage. at the back? It has planning approval um, and we have no, there's never been a clod or anything submitted to demonstrate lawfulness. We've no reason to doubt it, but it's, uh, you can see that it looks like there's foundations in for an approved dwelling. And does it have its own cartilage? I'm just thinking in terms of, of uh, I recall uh, just talking to Tommy about here not that way long ago, not in this mandate, but definitely in the last mandate where we had a similar sort of uh, issue up before us. And the committee took the view that the foundation was a building and allowed that as a, as a, 
as a as a as a reason to grant info. Now I know obviously each each application is judged on its own merits, but reference has been made here today about previous applications. So I think there's no harm in mentioning that particular. I, I would caution that from the chair, um, Stephen. Uh, we have changed. I, I've said it in the previous mandate under the old conditions and when the PPSs were uh, material. Uh, consideration was given slightly differently. Now we're under our draft plans, mm -hmm. our plan strategy. The interpretation is different. Yes. So it's not the possibility on the ground, for want of a better word, but it's the actuality or the reality on the ground. Yes. And as Seamus has said, that may exhibit the start, you know, of a building, e e even a dwelling. It hasn't got a certificate. It hasn't got a club. So we can't, the reality is, we can't take it into account. I didn't get the question. So, Sorry, yeah. but it's slightly knows. changed. But what Paul has alluded to is, and I made the point to Jonathan, it's a timing issue here. If this application came in after the Red Star was started to show a building and a defined cartilage, the Yellow Star will get passed. And the issue for you as a committee is, are you going to go out without outside the policy and actually accept something that's not on the ground just because of the timing issue? Or are you going to wait, follow the policy considerations, and when the proper application comes in on time, it will be approved on the, uh, the deferred list? And again, as I said to Jonathan, the issues with regard to financial work and timing is something that is not material to the committee. It may be an issue for the applicant, but it's not an issue for us as a committee. We have to stick within the policy guidelines. Paul. Yes, thanks, Chair. And, and Councillor McCann, it, it's maybe just the, the, the plan strategies actually set out the policy clarification now, which clarifies exactly what a building is. It's paragraph 3.58, and it says that a building is a permanent structure with roof and walls. So we've sort of we've we've clar clarified that ambiguity up as part of the plan strategy. Thanks, Chair. Okay. But being sympathetic in the current situation, it's a case of timing for the applicant. So uh Councillor Campbell, Glenn. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I agree that the timing is an issue and uh, certainly I would be sympathetic uh, because of that. And I suppose I just want to check, you know, is there any regular room for us as a committee uh, in the interests of expediency, you know, to set aside an aspect of HOU 13, given that the, the outcomes uh, in terms of planning be much different. It'll only be a matter of, well, however long it takes to construct the, the approved building. Is there any regular room in terms of that? Maybe that's, a, uh, that's begging for a legal response, but I'm going to ask it anyway, Chairman. Paul, are you going to take that? Thanks, Chair. Uh, look, I, I, I'll start and if, if I'm going to come in, but I, I, I think you would be setting aside the policy for the considerations that the agent has said, you know, that they want to construct the two developments together. Um, and for me, I wouldn't give that sufficient weight to set aside the policy or the plan. I think the application you know, this is an outline application. So even if you approve it, you'll, the agent will still, the applicant will still need to follow up with another application. If the application is refused and, and the agent and the applicant build out the development, they can come straight in for a full application. So we're going to need another application anyway. So I, I, I think it's still a timing issue and really whether it's approved or not, it's still going to need another application. So for me, I, I wouldn't be given the issues significant weight enough they they set aside the plan at this stage. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Uh, Councillor Mahan, David, do you want to come in? Rebex, first of all. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Is there any route movement for a condition? We can enter that uh, plan and it's only granted if the building next door works has started or anything there in those sort of parameters. Maybe I need to get legal advice on it, but... Which, sorry, just for clarification, which one are you referring to, David? Yeah, so the, the, the application uh, that we're dealing with here, Chair. Uh, yeah, no, but which one do you say has started? Well, it hasn't started. 
the one next door that previously got the recommendation passed in early this year. And as far as I understand, if that had started, granted it's no, not it a hasn't. planning. Granted no. it's not a planning. Um, no, the, the, we're looking at uh, an aerial photograph, and it's the red starred one. That's the the one that has got outlined planning from twenty twenty two. It is definitely not started. Yes, chair, I understand that. But can we put a condition in? If right, we to approve. Paul wants to come back. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Councillor Man. I think what you're asking is, can we put a condition on this permission um, that it won't that the the application then the development won't start until until the other one is commenced and potentially being built out and i think just look in terms That's of that correct. that that condition uh, we wouldn't normally put a condition on like that it wouldn't meet the legal tests of a condition um and we wouldn't be able to stand over it thanks chair oh. thank you chair okay uh councillor thompson early you want to come in as well yeah th thank you very much uh, chairman uh, and as of also if you've said uh, it is a bit of a timing issue right enough and uh, I, I really do feel for the applicant and uh, and his agent with, with regard to this. Uh, maybe if we can seek some legal advice from Anne Marie there, just with uh, with regard to maybe uh, the way forward from this, because uh, I think we're 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 probably in a place that we have never been before with regard to this application. So I just want some advice on that. That's okay. Anne Marie, could I ask you to come in, please? Here. You are. Uh, thank you, Member. But really, I think I would just be echoing what Paul has um, and Seamus have, all, have already said. It's it's there, there's it is pretty black and white in terms of the policy and, and the timing, and there isn't really much scope um, for us to step outside of that while not giving consideration to the plan and policy, which is always that you're grounding scope if you're ever going to be going against the recommendations of the officers. So I'm afraid I, I, I can't think of any legal rounds where you could um, interpret it differently at this point. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sir. Uh, Council McGuire, Tommy. Uh, Guru Margaret Carley, again, just for clarification on the back of what Paul said earlier, uh, with the clarification on what uh, is a building, if the foundations don't qualify, uh, as Councillor McCann was indicating, are, are we saying now that the Red Star not only needs to be uh, have a cartilage out to the road, but actually needs walls and a roof on it before it would qualify as, as the building? To qualify for the third building, just to clarify that, because I, I, I believe yep. we were getting an indication that if there was a cartilage out onto the road, that it would nearly be the nod to go ahead. Just uh, for clarification, Chair. Yeah, Paul, would you clarify that just for the record? Yeah, yeah, you're you're right, Councillor McGuire. Thanks, Chair. Yep. Any further questions for Seamus? Well, I, I think uh, the the committee has sympathy for the applicant and uh, indeed the agent. Um, I think we have said it's out with the policy and it's an issue of timing. It's not an issue about not getting approval at some stage. It's an issue of timing. So look, I'm looking for you to come forward with a recommendation. Right. Councillor McGuire, Tommy. I go, Margaret Carley. Well, again, on the back of the discussion, and I think we're all aware of the situation, but uh, I feel we have no option but to go with the recommendation, Chair. Okay, you're proposing to go with the officer's recommendation. Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. I suppose Anne Marie gave us very sound legal legal advice there, too, and uh, I have great sympathy for the applicant. Uh, I do have no doubt, however, that he will have two houses built on this site in the near future, and I suppose that's one positive leaving this meeting today, where other applicants, I suppose, are are you know they're they're fighting without hope. Some cases, you know, this man has got a clear path to having his two houses passed okay. in the near future. So I'm happy I, to I think happy to second that yeah. uh, proposal. Chair. Okay, J just a comment. It's been very useful the discussion with regard to trying to clarify further aspects, particularly of HOU 13, and again definitions and what is acceptable now and what is not acceptable. And I think it hopefully would better inform applicants and agents basically what they can and can't do and about the timing basically. 
So we have a proposal, duly proposed and seconded, to go with the officer's recommendation to refuse. Are we all agreed? If you're not, could you indicate otherwise? So we're all agreed? All agreed, right, that's unanimous. Seamus, could you um, sum up, please, and then? And so uh, members have agreed with this recommendation and have refused planning permission for the reasons stated within the report. Thank you very much. Uh, we're now move on. Uh, we have a deferred application six, five and six. We're on to application number seven. That's LA. Councillor Mahan wants in there. Sorry? Oh, Councillor Mahan, yes, David. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm going to have to leave the meeting at this stage, so make my apologies. That's okay. Thank you very much for your input today. David will note that you're leaving now at this stage. Thank you. Sorry, I can't interrupt, Chair. Okay, we'll go back. Uh, LA10 bar 2022 bar 0867. It's an outline proposal. Councillor Van Gallagher, yes. Uh, um, could I have a comfort break at all? Please. Uh, I think the better way of putting it, uh, I propose a comfort break for all of us. Well, uh, yeah, could I propose okay, a comfort yeah. break for us all, please? You could have a seconder for that, please. <laughs> Councillor McGuire, yeah. Could I have you back in here in about 10 minutes, please? No, no, no.
Um, application number seven, LA 10 bar 2022 bar 0867. It's out an outline. Seamus. Okay, members. So as the chair said, their application number seven, LA 10 2022 08670, an outline application for a two story dwelling and domestic garage on a farm. The site is located at approximately 190 metres north northwest of the junction of Home and Dewish Roads, Dumpwind. The applicant is S. Patterson, and the recommendation before you is to refuse planning permission as per the officer's report and subject to two reasons. Uh, members may recall this proposal was previously presented to committee with a recommendation to refuse, but was delegated back to officers to explore alternative sites on the farm holding. Nothing has been agreed upon with the agent subsequently requesting the proposal be returned to committee. So I'll run through the presentation in terms of the application site. I'll touch on the alternatives, although any such site uh, would require submission of a fresh application for consideration as it would uh, constitute a different red uh, outline. So we have the site location plan as submitted, um, showing the site identified in red. Access in the southern portion of the site, uh, you can see a green arrow there perhaps, uh, with the site proper being where the, the word site has been annotated. Um, the highest circle area uh, was uh, offered by the agent as a exclusion zone around the poultry farm to the south. Um, yeah. And that's our site. So the next slide shows the extent as one of two maps showing the extent of the farm holding. The site itself on this uh, slide is identified by the red X, while the poultry unit and main farm group are to the south and southwest, respectively. You can see the farm group there, perhaps it's difficult, but it's down in the bottom left corner. The poultry unit's more discernible there, it's immediately south of the site. Uh, and there's a a further group of buildings on the farm due north of the red X also. Uh, this slide shows the remaining extent of the farmland, which migrates further to the south of the poultry units. This is more or less the same site map uh, on a better scale, um, and it shows uh, the site's relationship in the main to the poultry units and uh, off to the left then or to the south west uh, the main farm holding the this slide forms part of a submission by the agent showing the applied exclusion zone in gray it's relative again to the poultry farm uh, with a further such zone in red for, uh, around the main farm group uh, it's important i suppose to note at this stage that these are notional exclusion zones they're not uh, policy based um, slide shows aerial imagery of the poultry unit with the red star showing the location of this image here which shows the poultry unit uh, on the ground uh, using google street view uh, well kept well run premises uh, and this shows to the other side where you can then get glimpses of the existing what we class as the main farm holding the address of the farm business showing uh, you can see the rear of a dwelling there and other uh, buildings around it uh, this yellow star shows the site uh, with a measured distance of approximately 160 metres between the closest part of the site and the nearest part of uh, the poultry farm, so that being the, the poultry shed closest to the road. Uh, slide shows the yellow star again identifying the site, the two yellow boxes showing the two farm groups, uh, the red rectangle showing the poultry farm, while the red star identifies a field on the farm that would be policy compliant, pardon me. The agent has indicated a susceptibility to flooding, uh, ruling this site out, but the image to the right-hand side of the slide uh, shows that the site on the flood maps is unaffected by any flooding zone. Um, it has also been stated that foundations may be difficult to achieve on this land due to its uh, PD nature, but no further supporting or expert testimony in this regard has been forthcoming. This shows a uh, Google Street View image of the site, uh, the black arrow indicating the site on the ground. Uh, the next image is closer image of it. Uh, and 
same again. This image shows approach towards the site. Uh, you can see uh, in the background uh, the poultry farm. The site is not perceptible as such on this approach due to the roadside hedges. But you can see it here then when you pass that bit ahead, the site is off to your right hand side. And again, down to the left on lower ground, you can see the poultry farm. This has been provided by the agent uh, showing access to be taken in at an existing access point off the home road to go travel along the field boundary up to the site. Now, here we have alternatives. Uh, as I stated previously, this application was delegated back to officers to explore alternatives. Uh, when we contacted the agent, this map was provided showing sites A and B, if you can make them out there, defined by the red or by the circles. Um, application A is shown here in Google imagery, uh, more or less where the, the cattle are in the field. Um, this, we ruled this out, went back to the agent and advised that not only was it not clustered or linked with any buildings or any group of buildings, but that it was unduly prominent and lacked integration. And this was site B, so I'll go back and show you it on the location plan. And this is the, the image I'm going to go to now is B, uh, the northernmost option. And that's it there. Um, while you can see it in the same view as some of the farm buildings, the difficulty again here is that it's extremely prominent and, and lacks integration and would not be capable of accommodating a dwelling without adverse impact on visual immunity. Now, I'll go back again then to the slide or to the image. I are planning identified then uh, in negotiations with the agent, the area outlined roughly in, in green, green, that this would be considered an acceptable site um, in terms of the policy. Uh, this is an image of it on the ground where you can see that it, there are associated uh, mature trees. The buildings can be viewed in the background and to the side and that there would be an overall uh, visual linkage and the clustering with these buildings and the site would also integrate sufficiently with rising land and mature trees to the rear. So summary of the reasons for refusal, uh, the proposal is considered contrary to strategic policy SP01, furthering sustainable development, DEO3, sustaining rural communities and policy HOU11, dwellings and farm businesses for the reasons that the site for the new dwelling and we're I suppose it's important to note here that what we're considering is the applied for site in red shown at the outset. The site for the new dwelling is not visually linked or sited to cluster with an established group of buildings on the Holden. There are no farm activities which significantly affect the amenity of the new dwelling or there are no viable pla verifiable plans to expand the farm group. And there are alternative sites in another farm group on the farm which we have indicated and that the site is not as close as possible to an existing group of buildings and would not have permitted visually integrate into the landscape. And then the second reason is about integration and design of the development in the countryside. And if we go back to the previous images, we can see that the site proposed is prominent and open and would not sufficiently integrate a dwelling. Uh, and it's important, I suppose, to note that what we are dealing with here is an application for a two story dwelling. So, Just to uh, sum up, uh, the recommendation is to refuse planning permission as before for the reasons outlined. Thank you very much, James. Uh, we have representation uh, from the agent, David McKinley, and then we will have representation from two public representatives, uh, Tom Buchanan again and Councillor Colette uh, McNulty. Well, we're taking David, first of all, David, You've been through the system before. Uh, you have 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes to present, and you may or may not be asked questions, uh, and then we'll move on to public representation. So are you, are you ready to go? Ready to wrap, yep, thank you. Okay, away you go. Uh, thanks, Chair and Committee, for allowing me back to speak again on behalf of my applicant, Samuel Patterson. Uh, Seamus, if you could go, or sorry, Seamus, if you could go back to the sketch I had with the rough red line on it. If you, there, that's the one there. Uh, is this site visually linked to the farmyard? I have um, 
The photo, this is a Google Street View photograph. That's a home, home road. It's at the junction with Dewey's Road. It doesn't show it on it, but it's right at the junction. You can see the hen houses on the left-hand side. You can also see my house proposed site on the right-hand side. Um, that, to me, integrates. Um, I assume it's showed a couple other photographs further up the Dewey's Road. Uh, and, and yes, one of them, I can't remember which one it was, but it also clearly indicated a visual linkage between between the, the, the proposed site and, and, and the hen houses. So I, I, think, I think the first one is completely inadequate in, in that there is a visual linkage to, to, the, to, to the hen houses, which is the principal, the principal farm practice uh, to, to the site. Um, we have viewed the two sites proposed. I presume one of them, uh, and I'll see confirmation that, is the tail end of the, the hen houses, which is, again, if you look at the photograph, it's to the left, which is the other side of the home road. Um, that's at the very end of the hen house between the, the Dewish Road uh, uh, and the hen houses. Now, at, at the very end of the hen houses, we have a we have an incinerator uh, there, which burns occasionally hens. I, I viewed the site back in the summer, uh, a little bit of breeze with, with a councillor to, to let him see the site and see what he felt of it. The smell at that particular day was 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 quite heavy at the at the, at the entrance to the at the entrance to the hen house. We walked down towards the Dewish Road, and it was it wasn't just as bad, but it was still there. You could still smell it. It's a quite heavy heavy smell of of, of burnt chicken wings and chicken feathers and what have you. I, I think it's completely unacceptable to ask for somebody to build a site if that's the first site that we're proposing. Uh, at the end of the hen house. Second site, yes, if, if you go towards the photographs again, uh, Seamus, please, uh, the area in green as I keep going. Yep, next one. Next one. That one, uh, the alternative site has been indicated. There's two cattle houses behind that shade. That's within 75 metres. And I looked at that initially and I said, look, I can't put you on there. You're within you're within seventy five meters of a of 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 a cluster of, of buildings that that houses between sixty to seventy beef cattle over the summer, sorry over the winter and a few less over the summer. There's a constant ammonia smell up there. We we do have issues with the seventy five meter rules with with uh, with, with 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 environmental health. If that was me building there against the farmyard, I'd be asked to move it further away, and that's genuine comes from environmental health, whereas it's acceptable for a farmer whose wife isn't a farmer to, to live within 75 metres of a farmyard. So I ruled both of them sites out and went back to the uh, my original site. So po po point one was uh, the site of New Dwellings, not visually linked or sited to cluster with established group of buildings. I think the photograph that I indicated, the Google Street View photograph I indicated clearly demonstrates that it does integrate with the hen houses, which is the, which is the principal farming practice in this case. Uh, point B, there are alternative sites in another group of farms, and the site is not as close as possible to existing group of buildings. Site A, I, I wouldn't build a dog house there to put the poor dog in. Uh, it's not a good site uh, uh, for the reasons that I mentioned. The incinerator literally just over the hedge. Uh, uh, and and, and, and uh, the second site, once is elevated, and let's, let's not forget, that's taken from Dewey's Road. So you're, you're going to have a house, more or less, sitting right on your face uh, in front of that. You'll not read the tree line behind it. In fact, it'll sit quite dominant. So I, I feel the site that we have, uh, if you go back three or four there, uh, Seamus, if you wouldn't mind, go back three or four to the one that you identified as, as an issue with, no, the one the other way. There, that one. Even that photograph, we'll go back one, even that photograph there, that is not an elevated site. We, we have got we've got tree lines. We've got tree lines. We're we're on the inside of them trees on the inside of the back edge. That is not an integrated site. Bearing in mind, or sorry, that is not a an unintegrated site. That that has got trees there of seven to twelve, maybe fifteen meters in height. We have a, a rising ground to the rear. So as you view it from my photograph again, looking straight back up with the red line on it, you've got landmass behind, you've got a a hedgerow uh, that uh, and we will have to actually provide a level shelf to go in to build a, build a two story or a story and supporter house in there. So, no, I, I, I believe that, that, that hand on heart, that site completely integrates with the two secure boundaries. The laneway will follow up the, the side of the field boundary, which, which is a hedgerow of its own right. And you'll not notice a three metre 
the four metre road going up the side of that. I, I, I'm sorry, that, that, that particular site that I proposed from the very start completely integrates and visually links to the visually links to the to the farmyard. Um, note that no, no other issues with the with planning criteria that these was the only two outstanding points and, and I'm happy and I hope that the committee can see that that my explanation of, of visual linkage and and indeed integration is, is fully justified in this case. I, I would ask that you uh, turn the application over to an approval as opposed to a refusal. Uh, thank you. That's me. Uh, I have nothing more to say. Thank you very much, David. Uh, Thank you. That's great to know. Uh, when you have nothing to say, just say it. That's brilliant. That's, that's Members, <laughs> any any uh, questions for David? You have one here coming, Councillor McCann. Stephen. Thanks, Chair. David, see the drawing you submitted with the uh, exclusion area around the hen houses. Yes. Uh, is that to do with the incineration of the hens, David? Well, it's it's to do with that, but there's also if, if we made an application to planning service. Uh, it seems to be a, a sort of a conditional thing or a an unquoted conditional thing that you lie 120 to 150, well, 150 meters away from a hen house, and, and at least a couple of hundred or 150 to 200 away from a pig house before you would site a house, and 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 that seems to come from comes from environmental health a little bit, but it's, a, it's just a general it's a general exclusion zone that people have used. Like I'm dealing with my park, and the 150 meter rule has become an eminent with them also. Uh, and that's coming from them, not I. So uh, it's, it seems to be a, a sort of a, a general knowledge from environmental health. These are the people that protect our, our air quality and noise nuisance and what have you. Yep. Okay, no, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, any further questions? No, not saying anything more for you, David. Thank you very much for. Being so succinct, we'll go on now to public representations. And again, I've got Mr. Tom Buchanan, MLA, and Councillor Colette McNulty. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you've only five minutes between you, so that's approximately two and a half minutes each. Uh, I'm going to defer to Councillor McNulty in the chamber if she would come up first of all, and then I'll bring you in after that, Tom. Okay. Okay. Again, it's strict two and a half minutes, and it's just your representation. There'll be no questions or anything to you. And at the end of it, I'll be handing over to Tom to finish off. Okay. Are you ready to go? Uh, I, I wish to record my support as an elected councillor for the West Tyrone DA for Sam Patterson's application, LA10 bar 2022 bar 0867. Uh, I have visited this site on, at the junction of Home Road, an area which is local and known to me. Uh, firstly, Sam and his fiancée need somewhere to live, and the site question is their only real option. This has been well outlined by Mr McKinley, Planning Advisor, and by local MLA Tom Buchanan. I witnessed, witnessed for myself the very real need for a separation away from the hen houses and other farm buildings because of the smells. This is common sense. The road in question is lightly trafficked road, I would suggest. In addition, there is no question or doubt about the applicant's housing need around the fact that there is an active and established farm business. Uh, this is not a speculative site for onward sale to a third party. This is for a local young couple who want to set up home here and work the farm, both having, having recently emigrated in the past. So I would like to ask the committee to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. You're very succinct. Um, Tom, you can come in now. Thank you, Chair. And uh, very briefly, this has, has already been said this for a young couple uh, to bring them home again who has emigrated. We want to get them home. We want to keep our people at home. Uh, and if we look at the various sites, if we look at the site with the red star on that was out at the bottom of the home road on the other side of the site that's, that's in for approval, um, it is susceptible to flooding irrespective of what the plan shows. I know this area like the back of my hand and I know exactly what it's like. I've seen that area flooded on many an occasion. Uh, if we look at the other site that has been uh, sorted or identified by planning service, again, it's right in, as the agent has said, beside uh, a farm, farm buildings that houses cattle and it's, it's quite close to them. And, you know, I'm working with applications where there is difficulties. 
uh, with farmers, uh, the farmers are facing difficulties by planning, sir, because they say they're building too close to houses. So here we have a situation where the planning are seeking to push a house in to um, uh, end up against um, farm buildings, which uh, really defeats defeats their own policy in a sense. In one way that that they're they're seeming to be bringing forward two different policies. And I think the site that has been identified by the agent is the best site that's there. Now, we're talking about integration. You're driving from the one towards the more. You don't see that site. You're, the the, the hedgerows is there that you do not see it. You're coming the other way. And and uh, if we look at the clustering and all, you see the hen houses and you see the house and all together as, as one um, uh, on, the, on the cluster. And you do have the hedgerows that's going to be around the house there that uh, we can see from the photographs. And you have the rising ground behind it. So, you know, in, in any um, uh, sense of the imagination, this is the best site that there is. For, these, for this couple to be able to build a house, to come home and to uh, be able to continue on in the farming in this rural area. That's what we're looking for. Let's hope the committee can take that on board whenever they're considering this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks very much, Tom. Yep, finish in time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, back to you, Seamus. Uh, so uh, just the um, main point I would like to, to query here or reiterate is that um, the site chosen is so distant from any group of buildings now there is a they have the luxury I suppose for want of a better term of having uh, two maybe three distinct groups of buildings on the farm when you look at this image you see the poultry units you see the dwelling the main farm group to the left of the poultry units and then you have the the other group here identified in yellow uh, the site as shown on the yellow star here is not only distinct and separate from any of those groups um, anyone driving up or down that road with no local knowledge could not honestly say that that is associated with either group um, and does not meet the policy uh, as a result. Um, other options do exist and have been discounted um, not, not only uh, identified but also uh, around the Group to the bottom left there, identified in yellow. If we look at the farm maps, um, you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, land around that area too. Um, to the extreme west, there's options there. These have been uh, discounted, but not for any uh, hard and fast or legitimate reason at this stage. So, um, it is. It remains the recommendation to refuse permission. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And maybe just following on members from Seamus, it's, it's just a couple of points of clarity that, um, and, and I think you do understand, members, but just to be clear, the, the separation distance that's quoted is not planning policy, and we'll always take each application as they come before us and on their site specific uh, merits. And I think it would be unfair to say that we're pushing uh, the alternative op opportunities that we've offered up, that we're pushing people up against the farm buildings. I wouldn't think that's the case. I think. These are alternative opportunities that still allow a degree of separation from the working farm. Um, and the working farm, those farm buildings are within the control of the farm business here that we're, we're assessing. So thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Members, any questions for? Yep. Council McGraw, Chief Bernard. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just Seamus. Um, has, has the client got a farm business number or herd number that entitles them maybe to, I know that there's a problem with the distance, you know, but is there any other houses on the farm associated with the, with the poultry houses, like, you know? Do you, in terms of, has he got any other? Has he got a farm business number, herd number he has, associated? He has, he has all of that, that has all been, uh, submitted and considered uh, against policy that he has an active and established farm business yes and there's no other houses on the farm well there's a dwelling at the main farm group uh, to the left of the poultry units that uh, i assume that's the parents dwelling okay okay councillor mccann stephen thank you chair uh, maybe i can get some commentary in relation to this to the to the proposed sites that was suitable and i'm thinking of what david or uh, david has said in terms of noise uh, smells and then the flooding area to the bottom right of the of the 
poultry houses. I know it bounds a, a floodplain. It runs in the floodplain, which I think the agent has said is unsuitable due to the ground quality. So uh, in terms of the smell, the incineration of animals, the noise, uh, what distances are, are there in terms of, you know, just and just to kind of follow on from what the agent has said, look to Shimas or to or to Paul. The the agent has indicated a notional exclusion zone of 150 metres um, from the hen house and 75 metres from the main farm group. Um, but this is not in planning policy. Um, this would, in, in cases, be applied when you're looking at a third party that would be to site or waste to site or uh, on the flip side, uh, if someone were to ex attempt to build hen houses within that sort of proximity to a third party house, but there'd be a, a lower bar when it would come to site and beside your own farm buildings and, uh, you know, being associated with the potential disturbance or nuisance associated. Any further questions? Um, Councillor Thompson, Earl. Yeah, thank you very much, <laughs> Chairman, and uh, thanks, to, thanks to Seamus uh, for that, but uh, and uh, for obviously David there for his presentation too. David, uh, just with regard to the agent, uh, he, he had mentioned, and uh, Councillor McCann has already alluded to it, you know, the, the noise and smell and the flood issues, and Seamus to say that 150 metres uh, if it was a third party issue, it w it uh, it would come under come into play. But then, if it's uh, a son of the family, it doesn't. Uh, I haven't seen that written down anywhere. So I'm a bit bit concerned there. I certainly wouldn't want to be living uh, that close to hen houses, uh, and I, I would know rightly what the what the smell of it would be. Uh, so. Uh, I'm taking under consideration what the our agent or the agent and uh, this aspect has said. Can you elaborate a wee bit more, just with regard, Seamus? Can you elaborate a wee bit more with regard to that 150 meter thing? Because you said it's, it's not written down. You said, but if it was a third party, it would be taken under consideration. But because it's a family member, it's not. Thank you. I think the, the, the issue here is that uh, if a third party wanted to build beside a, a poultry operation or another farm group that they had no control over the activities of, we would have concerns in that regard because they could then uh, cause issue for the operation of that business and complaints could arise. So we would be protecting the business as much as the potential occupant of a, of a proposed house. In this regard, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, I think in terms of the, the poultry unit itself, we're not here to say that this man or this person must sit beside the poultry unit. There are other options available um, that haven't been sufficiently discounted uh, in Bannon's opinion. Uh, maybe to follow on from that, uh, I suppose that the, the sites that have been indicated to us have been ruled out for various reasons. Are, are you saying now that there, there are other options there? Well, we have considered the options presented by the agent, as I showed on the slide there, options A and B. Um, there may be other options that haven't been presented to us. Um, there's quite a bit of um, farmland associated. If I can go back to... the farm maps. Went the wrong way, of course. Uh, there's, uh, if you can see the westernmost field on that, uh, beside the main farm group, field 12, um, there's scope there. There's scope in field 15 to the north, uh, west of the poultry unit on the other side of the home road. And then you have the, uh, the site that we identified. Now, again, I suppose the agent has ruled that out and that there's another farm group there. But there's there's certainly scope in that field where I identified the, the green blob and again further north of that in field 38. There are options available that would accord with policy. And for whatever reason, they haven't been 
fully discounted. And just, just to, if you allow me, Chair, just to follow up on that again. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah, just with, with regard to the one that you've indicated, Seamus, yeah. uh, was there a reason why those other sites that you referred to now were not indicated by yourself? Well, it was uh, the agent asked us to consider site A and B that I indicated. We did. We considered that those were prominent and didn't accord with policy in terms of visual linkage or clustering. Uh, the other sites, I indicated one on the map, and at that stage, the agent indicated to me that he wished to go back to committee and wanted the site that he had applied for considered as he believed it met policy, so there was no more... We weren't asked to consider anything further. He expressed his desire to go back to committee with this application. Thank you, Seamus. Thank you, Chair. Should we defer back? Mm. Yeah. Any for, oh, Councillor McCockery. John. Thank you, Chair. I've, I've listened. There's, there's been quite a few arguments and quite a few things presented from, from both the uh, the agent and the uh, political representatives and our own planning officers, and, and this one we we sent this one back to the uh, to the planners before to see if we could find an alternative site. And then we're hearing all the reasons why these sites don't work and why things don't work, but sometimes it's very hard to to visualize the topography and the visual links. And I'm starting to get a habit of this now, but I, I think perhaps maybe a site visit would be appropriate for this one that we go and have a look at it and see. And, and we're all pretty well informed on this one now, so it, it should be a fairly quick one. We can see exactly what everybody's alluding to, and, and we would maybe in, be in a better position to make a decision Decision, and that would be my proposal that we have a site visit. Okay. And Sir Robinson, Paul. I second that for a site okay. visit. Okay. Is there any further proposal? I don't like doing or sort of passing this through the committee, but I agree. There's a huge amount of land there on that holding. Uh, I, I am truly amazed that we can't actually come to. Uh, an agreement. Um, keep the talking down, please. Um, that we can come to agreement, but I think it's probably better that we have a site visit. So, we've got a proposal for a site visit. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. That's it. We've got a site visit, and then we'll bring it back, and it should be clear. So that's site visit. Right, we'll move on now to uh, item number six on the agenda, and that's to note the schedule of planning decisions issued in October. Any questions for the officers? If not, I need a proposer, uh, Councillor Robinson and Councillor McGrath to note. Thank you very much indeed. All agreed. Going to item seven, and that's an update report on planning appeals. Paul will take that. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, Member, so this is an update on, on planning appeals in October. And there was one appeal decision issued by the Planning Appeals Commission, uh, and that related the LA10 2022 LDP. And that was a certificate of lawful development um, that officers had, had refused. And the Commissioner um, agreed and dismissed the appeal. And there's quite a bit of detail in there, Members, but I think the key issue was. Um, that there was works undertaken, but those were preparatory works, and they weren't works um, in, in the course of a construction of our, or the erection of a building. Um, and that's set out specifically within Section 63 of the Planning Act, that requirement. Um, so there's no order costs, um, and the appeal was dismissed. Thanks, Chair. Any questions for Paul? If not, proposer, seconder to note. I've got Councillor Devine Gallagher is raising her hand to propose. Well done. And Councillor Robinson, thank you. All happy? Yes. We'll move on now to item number eight. It's like being in an auction. Don't do any movement here because I'll pick it up. Um, 
Uh, proposal of PAMS, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Chair and members. Again, it's uh, a report on the on the PANs uh, proposal of application notices, and we have had one PAN submitted, um, and that's LA10 2023-2237. Um, and the proposal there is for reprofiling of agricultural land uh, associated with Rockfield Quarry, and part of that application will be retrospective. And that uh, the site then is in the Rockfield Quarry Road, uh, there in a Walt. Um, Dona. Dona. Um, so the details of the of the pre pre application consultation set out within the rest of the report, there members, and it is just to to say that there it's a, it's a report for no there's no real input or decision making for officers or the council here at this stage. It's really a matter for the applicant um, and that pre application discussion, um, or and. Uh, this will come before the committee then at a later stage. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Pose note, Councillor Robinson and Councillor McGrath, your um, second. Thank you very much indeed. Good. We'll go on to item nine, and that's to consider a report in regard to Carrick and Shannon Joint Local Area Plan. Paul? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, and members, this is a report on a joint uh, local area plan. Uh, um, Carrick and Shannon, uh, 2024 to 2030, um, pre-draft issues paper, I suppose similar to our own options paper uh, that we progressed. And this is a joint plan by Leitrim and Roscommon County Councils. Um, and basically the, the pre-draft issues paper gives a broad, broad overview of the existing situation. And it sort of identifies a number of questions on their various topics and they're all set out there within the report members. I think just to note that the, there's no real conflict with the, the council's LDP, um, and I suppose we would welcome some of the key issues and initiatives uh, and discussion in there in, in relation to climate change and biodiversity. Thanks, Chair. Okay, Councillor Feely, Anthony. Do you yeah, th on? thanks, Chair. Yeah, happy to propose that. I think be useful. Again, okay, thank you very done. much. And happy to second Councillor Devine Gallagher. Well done. All agreed. All agreed. Go on to item ten, and that's to note. The um, statistical report for quarter one on planning performance, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Chair uh, and members. This is uh, the Q1 uh, performance report, and the statistics were published formally then on the 12th of October. And members, there's quite a lot of detail and, and quite a few appendices there, so I'm not going to through, go through it in detail. Um, I'm sure you'll want to look through it in your own time. Just maybe want to highlight a couple of key points. Um, under two, uh, paragraph 2.2, you can see that the trend of application submissions that we're receiving are going down, um, and that's a reflection across all of the councils. Um, in terms of applications decided, um, we have an increase in a, ge a general increase from the previous quarter. We also have an approval rate of 99.5% in Q1. Um, then moving on to the actual statutory targets in member, so you note in paragraph 2.7, um, we have actually, um, we're actually within the, the statutory target now for major applications. Uh, we're sitting at 29.8 weeks, uh, so a lot of good work went done there. I think it's probably significant in the position that we had moved from, which was 118 weeks, so significant progress there. In terms of local applications, we're just sitting outside the, sitting outside the target at the minute. The target's 15 weeks. Uh, we're sitting at 15.8, um, and I think that's just a sort of lag following the introduction of the planning portal and, and, and going forward from that. Um, you'll note then in 2.9 that the enforcement data um, in terms of the, those statistics uh, aren't still available yet from the new planning portal. Um, but I've, I've received some unvalidated stats recently, so I think they're moving in the right direction. Hopefully we'll have those figures soon. So just for noting, Chair, thanks. Thank you very much, David. Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. I think it was it's important to give credit where credit's due, and a lot of work's went into getting us into this bracket again, Paul. So fair play to all the staff who's involved in that in that work and, and making sure the process is as, as expedient as possible. I'm happy to propose, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, just my comment as well. I, I think it shows that um, our officials are working well within the protocols, but also that the system is working reasonably well as well with regard to applications come in that hopefully are policy compliant. Council McClockery, John. Thank you, Chair, and second, second. same proposals, and also apologise for affecting the statistics, because I'm one that drags a lot of these ones out. 
You don't apologize. You just go and do it. Thank you very much, John. Right, all agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much indeed. We'll go on to item 10, sorry, 11, and that's an update on the operating procedures. Uh, Paul, again. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, so, remember, this is, members, this is, I suppose, part of our local improvement program, uh, and we've had a workshop now, and, and then we uh, also brought back all the options that you had agreed um, and the prioritisation associated with them. So, um, moving in the right direction, these are the options, I suppose, members, that we can take forward that we've agreed, and they they require the, the various operating protocols to be updated. So, I suppose, members, and within the main body of the report, they have tried to set out the, the options that, that form the part of this particular um, report uh, and the revisions, and the revisions are all tracked for your ease of reference. So, uh, there's a number of options there that we're taking forward. Um, also, just to sort of mention, members, there's been some minor typographical changes and clarification points of accuracy in there as well, and you'll see those, but they're they're relatively minor in effect. Um, we had agreed uh, a revised list two uh, as part of the LDP steering group. That's incorporated within this as well. Um, and I suppose if, if members are content now will uh, and agree, uh, then these will be uh, put on the Policy and Resources Committee in December for ratification. Um, just, I suppose, to note, members, that um, the scheme of delegation and the statement of community involvement, when they're agreed, they need sent to DFI for them agree. So it's it's likely to be January before we can rule out these options, but um, we have to run them through the process. And again, just at the end of the paper, members, I know there's some other options there that uh, you have asked us to work on the details, and there may be an intention then to go for a workshop some stage in January, and we can discuss those. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much indeed for the update. Uh, members, uh, we've got five appendices, and these really are working out from a workshop, and they have to be approved so that they can go forward, as Paul has said. So I will need a proposed and seconder to uh, adopt, approve them. Councillor Robinson and Councillor McGrath, are we all agreed? All agreed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll go on to item 12, correspondence. There was one item of late correspondence that's just come in from the department, and it's regard to um, a wind farm application. I'll let Paul take us through it. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, it's correspondence members that just issued uh, this morning, um, actually to myself, um, and it's from the department. Um, and it's it's really just set out. Uh, I'm not sure you've seen it yet, but you can take time to look through it. Um, the correspondence set, sets out about a proposal for 12 uh, number one one turbines, um, the maximum blade height of 180 metres, and that's in the townlands of Tarry, Moyle, Middle and uh, Moyle, Nat, um, and Throwan. And the agent um, under uh, Section 26 of the Planning Act uh, asked the department whether this was a regionally significant application, and the department has confirmed that it is a regionally significant application. So that application then will need to be submitted to the department rather than the council. I suppose, members, what's uh, not within the report or the correspondence is the actual details of why it was a regionally significant application. It may be that it's just met the thresholds within the uh, regs, um, and that, that's clear, but um, the details within the letter um, doesn't set that out. So I think it would be uh, important that we write and seek clarification on the matter. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Any questions? I, are you happy to propose that uh, we get Paul to write back just to clarify the conditions that they're actually requiring, just for our benefit? As yep. Are you seconding, Tommy? Council McGuire. Yep. All agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. That's so noted. Item thirteen. Any urgent and relevant business? Nobody has come to me, and I'm not allowing any. Uh, that means there is a bit of confidential to be discussed. So I propose Councillor Robinson, Councillor Campbell, um, all agreed? Yeah, we're into confidential. And that's the end, basically. This one.
please, and Siobhan, Ms. Good, you can do the uh, rounding up, please. Okay, and um, thank you, Chair. So, in committee, the lead planner gave an outline of the background to the NIPSO report and noted um, a number of the recommendations, some of which are cause for concern. And um, so, members have agreed to note the report and respond formally to NIPSO outlining those concerns. Thank you very much indeed, uh, members. That is the conclusion. You what? Um. We do, yes. Proposed Councillor McCann and seconded Councillor Robinson. Yep, thank you. Well done. Safe home.